Hi, Kerner Tex here with part two in a series of videos on installing Beyond Linux from scratch. Now, if you remember from part one, we made a copy of the Linux from scratch virtual machine, renamed it to Beyond Linux from scratch, changed the IP address, changed the host name, and we also increased the disk size through um, manipulating the disk images as well as some of the uh, Linux FS tools. We then uh, made some configuration changes to the system, for example adding colors for directory listings and we also added a user uh, for everyday day-to-day -day use which is the best way to use a Linux system, just keep root when for use when absolutely necessary. Now there's one thing um, we just need to do with the user, uh, in fact sorry it's with the etc scale files. Um, now this is part of the detail in the manual that I might, might be skipping over when I go through the manual. I'm purely interested in showing how the system can be built, the details um, are in the text and if you are building a system especially for, for use, maybe not so much for um, learning how to um, install BLFS, um, these details are really important for um, a live system if you use it but not as important for, for learning. So the details I forgot were basically um, in this paragraph here and this one here which basically says that the directory, the scale directory, etc scale directory should be writable only by the system administrator as well as the files inside and that's purely so that when the files are copied and the home directories are made that they are readable only by that new user that's been created and by nobody else. So in theory it's a security risk in that if there are multiple users using the uh, machine that Linux is installed on, they could in theory view other users' files and that's probably not what's wanted. So again, although this is a demonstration and although it's very likely you're just building this for yourself, no other users in the system, you know, I'll, sh I'll show this anyway how, how it should be done. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got my uh, virtual machine running in the background, it's been boosted up and I've got a terminal on my host machine which is running so all I need to do is to, if you remember before, SSH as the uh, user into the virtual machine using the IP address that we set up for this particular virtual image. Okay, so I'm in into the new machine and if I just show you the attributes of the home directory you can see if you understand these things that the owner's got read write and directory access which is what you'd expect but so have others who are in the BLFS group, unlikely to be anybody else but you never know, but more importantly the rest of the world has got read access so the first thing to do, oh sorry before I show you in the next bit is also to show you the files inside, I can spell BLFS correctly, yeah. with the A because they're hidden, um, likewise you see the history that's been automatically created by the system that is purely readable and writable by the owner, which is BLFS. Nobody else, not even a group member, can read or write that file. And that's effectively what these paragraphs are saying here, that these files should be the same as well. But at the moment, as you can see, anybody in the BLFS group or anybody, anybody else, basically, can read the contents of these files. And uh, as I say, that might not be desirable. So a quick way for us to do this is to do the command chone to change our, uh, sorry not chone, chmod to change the 
um, modification of the files and we want to change this to 600 which is the octal numbers for that group, that group and that group. If you want to know more about how this works I won't explain it here but it's it's on the internet. Um, there's two ways of doing it. 600 is probably the easiest way for what we want to do because we're changing several attributes at a time. And I want to do minus R because I want to make this recursive. No I don't. Let's change the directory first. So I want to do actually 700 for the directory to make it R, W and X. So it's BLFS. Oh, right, OK, <laughs> we're inside it, so let's go up one. Do that command again. Now if I list that, you can see it's only the user, which is BLFS, which has got read and write and access to the directory. Whereas previously, members of the group and the rest of the world had read and access to the um, directory. So now if we go into that directory again, uh, list the files, all of them, and now we'll change the mode for the remaining files. So this will be 600, and we'll do dot b star for all the bash files. Let's check that. So they're done, and we'll do the same again for the dot profile. Okay, so this BLFS user is watertight now. So now all we need to do is the same thing for the files in the scale directory in case we're creating a user subsequent to this. So we'll change into the ETC. Let's have a look at the scale directory. Uh, did that wrong. Okay, so as you can see it's got the RX and RX for the group members and others so we do chmod 700 on the etc scale of course I can't do that because I'm a normal user it needs to be the root that does that so I'll become the root and redo this command so now if I View the scale directory again. And of course, we're not in there. So that's good. We've got read write access and we can enter the directory as well. So now we do the same for the contents of the directory. So the three bash files and the profile file, we need to change them so they're just RW on each file. So chmod 600 on etc scale dot b, everything begin with b, and we'll check that. That's OK. And we'll do the same with the profile and check it again. So that's good. So now this means any new user will have the correct attributes where nobody else can read or write for that matter these, these files in the, in the new home directory. Right, so let's get on with uh, compiling some more packages and get this system built up. So what I'll do is go back to the BLFS user, and go back to sources and back into the BLFS directory where we're doing all our building from and you can see the packages we installed last time so I'll get rid of that one now the first thing I'm going to do is I was going to work through this um, list for the security section just picking out the um, packages that are necessary to install. There's not too many in here. There's some we can't install yet because X Windows needs to be um, available. So there's only going to be maybe three, four. Um, but what I'm going to do is jump straight down to sudo. Ideally I'd like to install PAM because 
we've got OpenSSH, which needs to be rebuilt with PAM support. Um, but being sort of lazy person that I am, I want to build sudo just to make it easier to jump into the root user to um, install the packages rather than having to type the uh, root user's password every time. So I'm going to jump to this one. It just means I think we have to reinstall sudo again at a later time, but it's not a great deal of uh, trouble. Yeah, so as you can see an optional optional installation for sudo is PAM and um, I think it's worth worth having sudo with, with PAM capability just to tighten things down a bit more. So let's copy the link for sudo, the sudo package, type wget in the terminal, make sure we are on the blfs system, you can type something like uname minus a which gives you all the details about the system and the kernel. So yeah, there's the host name and that's the same version as the uh, kernel that we're, we, we installed in Linux from scratch. So yeah, let's get this file. I'll have to copy it again because I highlighted the kernel version. So I'll copy link, paste it in there. Right, and again, because we haven't got the uh, certificates installed yet, we'll have to redo that command and add this no check certificate command afterwards. Right, okay, so now we've got a permission denied message, and the reason is this is the first package um, we've installed or copied into the BLFS directory because we were root originally, so all the files have been created as root. This one's BLFS because that would have been the user that, which is, would be 1000, I think, user number 1000. That would have been the user number that um, compressed and archived this BLF, BLFS boot scripts directory. So it just happens to have come out as the correct user. So that's purely coincidence. But these other ones, um, these are the ones that we created as root because that was before the time we had a user, a normal user. So what we should, we should do straight away is become the root again and we'll change ownership of the BLFS directory and its contents to BLFS so that we can download the packages and build them all as the normal user, as the BLFS user and just leaving root for the installation part. So I'm going to, well, I might as well just do it from here. So chone minus R, we can do a shortcut of zero, sorry, not zero, zero, it's BLFS, BLFS. So that's the BLFS user and the BLFS group. And that's going to be sources, BLFS. Okay, that should be done. So let's have a quick look. Let's do LD first look at the directory and um, we, we can see that the directory is owned by BLFS and BLFS is the only user that's got right access to it and we can also look at the contents and we can see that everything's been changed to BLFS now so that's good so let's retry that command again with the no check certificate it should work this time and there it goes Okay, so let's extract it. The usual sequence as we saw every package we did in uh, Linux from scratch, download, extract, change the directory, and then start working on the commands that are in the manual. So as I remember before I said with the configure, they give you effectively a sample configuration but it's worth checking to see what other options there are and indeed there is an extra option we need to add which is this without PAM option because we haven't got PAM installed at the moment. Um, the ones up to this point pass, with pass prompt are the ones that are all in the in the given configure. So let's paste that part of the configure in and add in there was out PAM bit. Otherwise it's likely the configuration complain that it can't find PAM. 
So just add that in after a space on the configuration command and press enter. As it says there, this is the case with most of the packages, nearly all of them I'd say. You can do configure help, minus minus help, sorry, to get a list of all the options that the configure will understand. So if you really want to tune your own system, uh, you know, fine tune it for the packages you're in, that you've got installed or how you want those packages to be used, etc. or how the configuration should work, even down to where where the file should go to when they're installed. You can um, examine that and... Uh, uh, make make the adjustments as necessary but as before this is a demonstration it's something we're learning we'll just stick to what the book says and stay within those confines so that's the configure run we can scroll back and we can see we do make now so if you remember before we have the uh, environment variable if we look that up for the number number of jobs that can be run simultaneously which is make flags that's it I couldn't remember it then for a moment so yeah we've got that set to minus J4 so it will use all the cores we've got on this system mine uh, four cores as I said before some packages you'll find that you may run out of memory with that that many cores being used it depends on what sort of package it is and how much memory you've got so you may need to knock that back if you've uh, if you've got problems in compiling if, if the compiling stops halfway through with um, you know sort of errors saying out of memory or um, you know just uh, errors you can't explain it's worth knocking that back and retrying the make also conversely on the smaller packages especially you could up that figure and uh, get more performance um, some packages doubling that will, will make a hell of a difference like uh, the kernel for example is a good example you can um, up, up that figure quite a lot and it does make a difference even though in theory it shouldn't it uh, it does does benefit cuts the time it takes to compile but so really the number of cores is a good a good middle 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 uh, ground to, to go for for compiling so let's do make and there you go it's just whizzing away While this is running, what I'll do is I'll get another terminal up, I think. Uh, no, what I can do is log into the actual real virtual machine. And as the BLFS user, user and do top, right, okay, it's actually finished. I was going to say we can actually monitor that all the cores were being used. So I'll do that on the next compile just to make sure that things are running. So that's installed. As I said on the previous video, I'm not going to be running any tests. Uh, might do the odd one here or there where it's necessary, but generally I'm not going to. So now is the root user, so let's become the root user. We do the make install and it looks like a soft link is created as well. Right, okay, so that's maybe I should have just done SU. Okay, there it is installing. Okay, it's come out, that's that done. So now we've got to configure the sudoers uh, configuration file, which basically says who's got sudo access and what access have they got to, to what um, programs. So, Let's, uh, let's see what it says here. Oh, quite complicated. Right, so we'll create this file as a default file. So I shouldn't have come out of the SU then. Okay, so it looks like what it's saying is two ways of uh, uh, 
allowing normal users to become uh, super users using sudo and uh, one way is to create the sudo file for the su sudo users so the sudoers sorry and the other way is to do the pan one so what we'll have to do is create this for now then we'll remove this and then create the pam configuration file afterwards so I'll paste that in we'll also have to make the uh, yeah we'll also have to make blfs user part of the wheel group so to do that we need to do user mod um, space minus a minus g which means basically add this group to which is the wheel group to blfs user so if we type groups blfs it's now got access to the wheel group and that also means that when we come out to blfs we'll have to re-log in as blfs to activate that because if I actually show you the groups we've got at the moment you see we're only a member of the BLFS group so just re-log in and now do groups again and you can see where the uh, wheel group has been activated so in theory we should be able to do something like um, let's try IF config right that can't be found even though we know it's there so let's try sudo if config it's warning us and it's asking us for our own password so that's the blfs password and that's worked now so that that shows that um sudo is working correctly it's it's restricted us uh, we couldn't run the if config program but as soon as we put the sudo in it's asked us for the password and then it's ran run the program and of course there's a timeout on the password so if i rerun if config again with a sudo it will run instantly without asking me for a password so that's worked as well so that that's looking like that's working fine so if you remember i had a paper list of all the packages and i'm making a note of which ones that we're installing just to come back to them if necessary and a sudo is one of them I'm just going to put a little mark on that that it needs to be revisited after PAM has been installed so I'll leave that up there because we can come back to that and we'll now go on to um, make CO we'll just start going down this list so let me get that one up next next and of course we need to change back to sources here because we uh, started a new session and we can delete that sudo directory there as well okay so let's download this certificates package okay again it's failed it's a HTTPS protocol so that's why it's complaining so we've just got to tell it tell wget to ignore the fact that there's uh, no certificates and not to bother trying to check oh right okay so I've downloaded that but I've just noticed that we need to install another package it's come under required so it's mandatory therefore we've got to install this prior to uh, make CA so I'm going to middle click that link let's bring it up here and this has got a recommended link underneath it, recommended dependency. So as I said before, we've got to do all the required ones and I'm doing all the recommended ones as well, purely because they are recommended. So let's middle click that one and move on to that tab. Okay, so this has only got optional dependencies. Um, we will be installing GTK doc, I believe later on, but it's not important now, so we can ignore that never installing Valgrind so I can ignore that one as well so let's now get this libtazen library okay same problem again 
And this makes CA is the package that will stop us having to do this extra switch on uh, wget. So it's you'll see all of a sudden I'll just be doing wget and it'll be working for HTTPS protocols. So it just magically starts working. We don't need to enable anything. All we need to do is build and install make CA. So let's extract that. Okay, so looking at the command explanations, see what options we've got. There's only one to enable the GTK docs. Well, we're not installing that at the moment, so we can't use that. That switch there is just the one that's already given. It's just saying prevents build, building of the static versions of the libraries. So we can just copy that and paste it in. So when the make starts running, I'll switch over to the virtual terminal just to make sure that we can see all the cores are being used. And yeah, they're all, they're all active. They're not really busy, but they're, they're definitely being used. So that's okay. Oh, that was still part of the config, that's why. So it's building now. Yeah, that's that's better. That, that went quite high then. Uh, it's quite a small package that's already built. So now let's install this. And we can use sudo, of course. That's worked. And it's saying if we didn't pass the enable GTK doc parameter, which we didn't, you can install the API documentation. Well, API is programmers for de developers, so won't be bothering with that. Might might install some documentation if it's optional, but definitely not the API. Uh, unless you're a developer or a programmer, you, you, you're not going to want to do that. So that's that one done. Let's get rid of this. We can shut that tab down and move on to P11Kit. So let's copy the link. WCAT. Yep, doesn't like it. So just add this switch again. Okay. Now I hope you can see that as we're doing these packages, we're building up. Uh, on previous packages we're building in functionality so for example the first bit we did was to install wget and that was to allow us to gain access to HTT protocol uh, URLs and now we've installed sudo to allow us to change routes to even just to do single commands without having to type the password in if it's you know if we're working really quickly it wouldn't ask for the password um, and now we're uh, installing software to allow the certificates to work correctly on on wget and then we'll get around to installing pam to make some of these package packages secure it's just uh, all building on top of stuff uh, we're doing previously it's making the system more secure and it's making the system more usable more more easy more easy to use so a bit bit of hardship at the beginning but we're just building up and building up and uh, just gets to, get, gets to be a nicer system uh, as we go along so that's extracted. Let's copy the commands and what we've got here. Prepare the distribution specific anchor hook. Okay, so that looks like a bit of configuration there. And the configure command. That's one that's given. Use this switch if you use the free BL library. Right, we haven't got that. Okay, NSS is a runtime requirement and that's part of the security and I do believe we need it for something as well so we can try and install that uh, yeah we'll try and add that in it might break it might not I don't know but let's try it as I say NSS is used by other packages so we'll be installing it Right, okay, yeah, it, it needs it now actually, so that's not quite right. That it's uh, it says it's a runtime requirement there, it's uh, not actually true, it, it needs it for compile. Um, let's try installing NSS now actually. What does that need? That needs NSPR SQLite. Right, now let's not do that now, let's do that later, and we'll just make a note to reinstall P11 kit with that switch t turned on. 
So let's rerun without that switch. The configure command. Okay, that's better. So now we can type make. Okay, that's successful. So now we can become the root again. Um, it's worth noting sudo will only work on the first command because this effectively is a second command. So where there's multiple commands, you just can do sudo seo. You can see it still remembers that um, or it thinks I'm still sitting at the terminal. It's not asking me for the password. Okay, that's all successful. Right, configuring P11 kit. Yep, so let's copy that in. And that's done. So now we can go back to make CA. Let's come out of the root. Delete that directory, and if you remember, we'd already downloaded this, so we can just do the extract command. And all we need to do is make install. Uh, sorry, that's going to be as the root, of course, because it's an installation. That's it. As the root user, after installing p11kit, download the certificate store source and prepare the system for use with the following command. And it says if this is the second time we're running it, we've got to do something else. So this is the first time, obviously, so we just copy and paste that command. And here it's... Uh, I believe it's downloading and creating all the certificates. Alright, some have failed, but that's not a problem. No for GNU TLS by the looks of it. So it says about um, if software is still installed that references file. Well, this is a brand new installation, so we won't have that software. We can skip that bit. And it says the next bit you should periodically update the store with the above command or either manually or via a cron job. So I won't be, I don't think I'll be showing cron. Um, it's not a difficult package to install. Um, but yeah, this, this would be a good, uh, good script to put in a cron job to have it running periodically. So what I'll do is just, cop Ooh, this has got to be done as root of course. Copy this in. And that is, oh sorry, yes, that's, I shouldn't have copied that all in because I'm not going to do cron, that's the actual cron script for the looks of it, so, uh, well it's there now, but th this is the actual command that needs to be run if you, if you run it manually, which is the one we've already run. So, I've created a cron script and I won't be installing cron, but it doesn't matter. And then there's a bit about adding additional certificates there, how to how to do that, and how to override uh, certificates that have been provided. So that should be it for make CA. Uh, yeah, we can come out of that and remove the directory.
So the next one we've got is console kit. So this needs XORG library, so I'm not going to do that until we come around to doing that part of the uh, X window system. Cracklib is a good one to have. This is, um, well, as it says here, it contains a library to enforce strong passwords. It's got a library of weak passwords and it enforces the usage of uh, strong passwords. So now you'll notice this has got an HTTPS URL, but when we use wget this time, it won't complain. It will just go ahead and download it because the certificates will be found and it's not working. <laughs> right, let me try logging in as the BFS user again, see if there's any parameters I need. Setting in the environment variables. Well, BLFS. Okay, so is that something else that needs doing then? Uh, Alright, oh, okay, I thought it was that make CA that enabled this. Uh, oh, I wonder if it's because I need to reinstall wget. That's probably what it is. Let's go and have a look at it. Uh, see what requirements are for that one. Alright, it does say it needs it at runtime. Maybe it makes a link at compile time, so what I should do is just carry on because uh, we want oh no we can install wget again actually can't we now because it hasn't got PAM requirement so yeah we could do this next actually let's uh, extract wget and reinstall it Okay, there's no changes to make there, we can just copy this all in. Okay, so that's finished. Let's uh, install it again. And let's go back to crack click button and try this again. Right, I'm wondering if I've missed something now on the make CA part. All oh, right, okay, I, I missed this bit out. I thought this was optional. It does actually say as the root user after wget is installed. So let's copy all that in. So sudo su. And let's see if that works. No, no, it's still not working. All right, what I'll do is a crack on. Uh, Let me log in again as the BLFS user again.
no, okay, I might be being a bit premature here. It may be something else that actually enables this functionality. I thought it was after the certificates was installed. It's not. Right, okay, crap clear. It's saying it can't find it at that address, and we've copied it correctly. So that probably means that there's been a newer version released. So let's find, let's copy part of this address and see if we can find it elsewhere. In fact, what might be better is let's copy the file name. And do a search for it. Right, Oregon Star. I believe this is the server that LFS recommends to get stuff from if, um, if you can't find stuff. So here is a copy of it. Copy the link. Fetch that. Okay, that's on its way. Now, because I've got that from somewhere other than the link that's in the manual, I'm going to do an MD5 checksum on it just to ensure that it is actually a genuine copy, which I'm sure it will be. So, C52 and 06D, so that looks good. And we've got another download here to get hold of. which is a word list for English speaking countries and I think it says here about other word lists available and there's an, a note there about the importance of using regular words of the spoken language Uh, right, okay, that's not been found either, so let's see if that is in that. Oh, I've got rid of the Oregon one, let's go and search for it again. Copy. Yep, there it is. Copy link. Get. Okay, that's that got fetched OK. And let's do a check sum on it. So we've got C A E and 316 and that matches up beginning and to that MD5 sum, so that's okay. So the next one we've got is an optional dependency of Python. Well, could install that now but don't want to get on with um, installing the security software Python gets installed uh, anyway later on it's a requirement for quite a few other packages so I'm going to ignore that for now and just get on with the uh, installation so let's start by extracting the package Let's check the config command. So we've got a few here. So default dict is part of it and disable static. Yeah, so there's nothing else to add or take away there. And just copy this straight in. Okay, so it says be sure and attain a large word list file and run make install and make dict generate word list index file, which is I believe what we're going to be doing now. So let's become root and install the package. Oh, right, okay. And then this bit will extract that word dictionary and install it. Right, okay, so now it says 
If installing Crackly, Crackly after your LFS system has been completed, which it has, and you have the Shadow package installed, which we have, you must reinstall Shadow 4.6 if you wish to provide strong password support on your system. However, if you are now going to install uh, Linux PAM, you may discard this note as Shadow will be reinstalled after the Linux PAM installation. So that looks like we should go and install Linux PAM next, based on what, what that says. So I'm just going to knock off Cracklib off the list. And we'll get rid of this. And we'll jump into Linux PAM, which is there. So there's a couple of downloads here. Optional documentation, so we'll have that. So we've got some optional uh, packages here, one of which is Cracklib, so we've already got that installed. And some more optional packages to rebuild the documentation. So let's expand the package. It's called Linux PAM, not just PAM. Right, okay, that's worth noting. The package is 1.30, but the docs are 1.20. So it says if you download the documentation, unpack the table with this command. So we did that. We should, we should unpack it. And now we've got the configure command. So let's copy that in and see what we can do to that. Enable secure. Uh, that's already in there. Disable regenerate docs. This which prevents the version of the package trying to install to build its documentation and failing if the required dependencies are present but except W3M but links is present. Remove the switch if you have installed W3M. Right we haven't so we can leave that switch in there. So let's run the configure. and build it. Right, that's built successfully. So now we can start installing it. Uh, it's right, that's for tests actually, so I won't paste that in. Only in the case of first installation, remove the configuration file that created earlier by issuing the following command as a root user. So let's do that. It's a first installation. Now we can install it. Okay, it's installed correctly. So we've got some configuration files. I've got an example file here, um, and then I've got specific files here that can be copied and pasted. The remaining generic file depends on whether Cracklib 296 is installed. If it, if it is installed, use this one. So let's copy that in because we've just installed it.
now add a restrictive etc pam d other configuration file with this file programs that are pam aware will not run unless a configuration file specifically for that application is created so let's copy that and that looks like that's done so let's tidy up important you should now reinstall the shadow 4.6 package so let's go straight to that one and we've already got this on the system but let's get it from the link anyway and two requirements here Linux Pam and Crack Grip we've got them both so that's okay so let's extract shadow and cd into it so the installation commands shown below are for installation where linux pam has been installed with or without crack installation and shadow is being reinstalled to support the linux pam installation if you are reinstalling shadow to provide strong password support using the crack library and without using linux pam ensure you add the with libcrack parameters configure a script below initially the following command so we are reinstalling to provide strong password support but we have got linux pam so we don't need to do anything there so let's check the configuration commands there's nothing extra there so we can just copy all of this in and paste it Okay, that's successful. Let's become the root and install it. Okay, configuring shadow. All right, let's select that so that the mailbox is not added for new users. So the rest of the page is devoted to configuring Shadow to work properly with Linux Pam. If you do not have Linux Pam installed and reinstall Shadow to support strong passwords via the crack library, crack lib library, no further configuration is required. Well, we have got both, so we need to do this. So let's copy that configuration. Big one for login. One for password, one for SU, one for chat each, and one each for all these packages listed here. So now it says, warning, at this point you should do a simple test to see if Shadow is working as expected. Open another terminal and log in as user, then SU to root. So let's do that. Let's open a new tab with BLFS user. So we've got to log in. That's OK. Now it says SU to root. That looks OK. If you did not see any errors, then all is well, and you should proceed with the rest of the configuration. Did receive errors. Stop now and double check the above configuration files manually. And it gives some suggestions there to uh, fix any possible errors. So that's all okay. I will also check from the actual terminal on the machine itself to make sure that it works from there. So start from fresh login, become the root, and again, that looks okay. There's no errors there, so I think that's looking quite good. Now 
Instead of using etc login access file for controlling access to the system, Linux PAM uses PAM access. Right, okay, so it's saying rename this file so that we can use a PAM module. And the same for limits as well. And again, it's warning us at the bottom there, be sure to check, test the login capability before you log out. Errors in configuration cause permanent lockout requiring a boot from an external source to correct the problem. So I think we've done two sets of tests, one via SSH, one and actually on the on the terminal itself, so that looks good. So now I think we can go back and reinstall sudo. which is one of the packages and OpenSSH needs to be reinstalled as well. So let's go back and redo this one to take advantage of Linux PAM. Okay, it's unpacked. So now this time we don't need the without PAM switch because we do have PAM, so we can just copy this all in and press enter. Okay, so let's install it, or reinstall it rather. Okay, that's done. Shouldn't need to do any configuration apart from a reconfiguration. Let's read this again. The sudo is complicated. Uh, Right, so we definitely need that. I'm not sure whether we need to install this or not. Let's copy that in and let's just have a look at this file here. Bet this breaks if I remove this. Let's try it. So I'm gonna let me delete this and log in again as BLFS. Now let's try and sudo to SEO. Right, yeah, we do need that that file then. I thought as much because it's referring to the wheel group where it's become uh, part of the wheel group. So let's become the root, paste that back in again. This should work straight away, I think. Yeah, it has. So all that's required is to paste in that additional PAM configuration file. So that's sudo done the second time. Uh, now we can reinstall OpenSSH. Just down there. So there's Linux PAM. We don't need to add the group or the user because that's already been done so we can jump straight in with the configure command 
So let's go back to sources, BLFS. Let's just check the directory is OK. And we're installing OpenSSH. So there's a patch to fix a security issue and we'll copy just the configure in because we need to specifically say it's got PAM available now. So we'll add that. Um, arguably we need to install this again after X has been installed. So I'll make a little note of that. So you can see how um, things need to be reinstalled as you gain more and more functionality to take advantage of that functionality. That only really happens early on. Uh, later on, it, it, I can't think that it does happen at all. So I think that's a good enough configure command just to add the with PAM switch and press enter. Okay, so that configure is finished and you can see there, whoops, it's jumped. It says PAM support is enabled. So that's that's good. So we can just go ahead and build it. Okay, so we can become the user, uh, sorry, super user, and reinstall the package. Worth checking this, it may have been overwritten by something we've just done or the installation, so we'll just go back to that. Go to the bottom, uh, it's not been altered luckily, so we're still allowing root logins. Uh, we can actually change it now because we've got a normal user, so uh, I will change that. Let's do no. Save and exit. And we'll restart the server as well to actually uh, take that change into account. And to start using the uh, new copy that we've got, which will use the PAM support. And that's okay, that's worked. So at the bottom here it says if you added Linux PAM support and you want to want SSH to use it, then you'll need to add a configuration file for SSHD and enable use of PAM. No SSH only uses PAM to check passwords. If you disable password logins, these commands are not needed. Well we haven't done that. So we need to Add this in and we'll need to restart the server because that's modified the config file. So let's restart it again. So let's check that we can uh, log in again. Well, the connection's worked because it's asking us for a path password. Password's worked. That's all okay. We're in. So we can get rid of that one. So I've made a note to reinstall that after we've got Xorg installed to take advantage of the uh, functionality mentioned. Uh, 
wherever it was, I can't remember where it was now. Oh, this x horse uh, functionality. So I shall leave that up because I'll probably forget we've got a lot to do before we get to XORG installed. So let's just recap what we've done. We've installed MakeCA. Uh, I believe we've installed no console kit. We can't do yet. Cracklib we've done. What else do we need here? We've done PAMLib. P11 kit. Shadow. And sudo. So I think that will be okay for now. Yeah, NSS we're going to install at another time, I think, won't we? Because that had a few dependencies. Uh, oh, yes, I recommend. Yeah, they're quite big packages. That one we've already done, haven't we? Uh, what else did SQL Lite need? Um, actually, that doesn't look too bad. We could probably do this now because SQLite or SQLite will be needed later. So, yeah, let's let's do this now. Unzips a small package. Yeah, let, let's do these now before we move on to the uh, next step, which is the uh, X libraries, I think. Let's just take a look. Yeah, X Windows is the next bit I've got planned. So let's start with this unzip. Still confused by this, no checks to go. I think what I might do is reboot this machine in case it's uh, anything that needs to be restarted. Again, might be useful to sneak a peek at every now and then. And I'll just copy, uh, sorry, move this window over here again and SSH into there. Right, so let's try that again. Right, I'm going to have to read about that offline. I've probably missed a command somewhere or something. So I'll have to keep adding this switching, unfortunately. Oh, let's put wget in. Right, so tar zip. Right, this this first bit is all about uh, file names and how they're stored, which uh, uh, language they're stored in, and so on, which character set. So um, it's worth reading that in case that affects you. Let's build this. And install package. OK. 
Okay, so that's unzip. Let's mark that one off. The system utilities. Yeah, unzip's used by quite a few packages, as you might imagine. So now we're doing SQLite. Which is chapter 22. Again, this, this database is used by quite a few packages as well. Uh, let's remove the old package and fetch this new one. Just got some extra documentation, which I, again I'll download. Uh, I don't know if you notice here that libedit is in bold compared to the unzip. Um, well, I said I wouldn't install any optional uh, packages. Unzip is optional, but as I say, it is used later on, so I may as well install it now, which I've done. It's it's a small package. Libedit is in bold because it's not actually part of the uh, Linux, uh, sorry, beyond Linux from scratch manual. So it would take you, as you can see, the uh, link at the bottom of the screen. It's taking you off to the uh, website where that's kept. So I won't be installing anything like that at all. So let's extract SQLite. you notice the extract name and the package name are slightly different. SQLite dash autoconf we can unzip the documentation and then prepare the configuration so let's just check the configure commands cell staff it static enable FTS5 Okay, it's just explaining some of these uh, additional C flag uh, options. It says that Firefox requires some of these options. So we will be installing Firefox later on. So we'll, we'll keep these options as they are. So let's run that, that configure. And compile it. So this should be hammering the cores quite a lot. So if we just have a quick nosy. Oh, there's only two in use at the moment. So obviously what's being compiled is being blocked by something. But they're, they're maxed out, so that's that's good. Okay, that's finished, so we can install it. Make install. Okay, and then we can install the documentation. And that's all done.
so I'll just mark that off. And we're on to NSS. So yeah, again, the first one didn't download because of this switch that's needed. And that patch is just downloaded again, so it's renamed it with a dot one suffix, so I'll just remove that. And all oh, right, okay, now we need an SPR. So let's download that next. So we can extract that. So what we got here is saying we've got with Mozilla, which we've got with P threads. Yeah, so we'll be installing some Mozilla products, namely Firefox and Thunderbird at least. So we will leave that as it is. So we can just copy this as it is and com configure and compile. And now we can do sudo install and that's done so now we can do NSS already installed it so let's extract it and change to it Right, it says this package does not support parallel builds, so they've included a minus J1 to override the uh, make options that we've we've set, where we've got it set as uh, minus J4. So let's just check the options again. Okay, looks like we can accept the defaults. There's nothing fancy there at all.
Okay, so that's installed. Uh, we can, sorry, not installed, made. We can install it now. So if P11 kit 0.2.3.15 is installed, P11 kit trust module can be used as a drop-in replacement for user lib, lib nss ckbi.so to transparently make the system CAs available to NSS aware applications rather than the static list provided by user lib, lib nss ckbi.so. So as a root user, enter that command. Additionally, for dependent applications, do not use the internal database. The user bin MakeCA script included on the MakeCA package can generate a system-wide NSSDB with the minus N script or modifying the etc. MakeCA comp file. Right, actually, I think this is what's missing from the wget. Um, I think we need to rerun the uh, certificates. Uh, script which would be the one that goes in the cron script which is this one here um, yes it's down there if running the script a second time with the same version of cert data for instance to add additional stores add the r switch to the command line if packaging right so it looks like this should be run with the minus r and minus g No, can't use minus G. Right, yeah, that this has worked better now. We got errors before for these ones, and I thought that was because GNU TLS wasn't installed. So this is looking better already. Uh, Right, we're done with NSS, let's get rid of that. Um, let's go back and install, let's mark NSS off of the list, where is it, there it is, and reinstall P11 kit. Yeah, that's got a dependency. I think there was a switch we... Oh, yes, that's right. It was this BL switch we needed to add. So let's try... Let's just try downloading this again. Copy link. See if this has fixed WGET or not. Yes, it has. So it was, it was the fact that we needed to update the uh, database with that script. So it's downloaded there with the dot one suffix, so it's it's worked. So let's remove that version and just extract the original one. And yep, need to do all this again. So we copy the config and we add in this option because we've now got NSS and we can use it for this, this hatch, hashing that's mentioned. It shouldn't fail the config this time. Okay, I don't know if you can see that there. Anyway. Yeah, there it is there. So it's enabled this time. So let's recompile that.
タイガースタン。become the root and reinstall it. Okay, failed with the link. That's right, that's the last command anyway, so that's not a problem. It's just saying it already exists, which it would have done because that's from the first time round we installed it. So again, this is likely to fail this link, but we'll run it in just to be sure. No, it's run, so it probably means that the install removes something. Now, just to be sure, I'm going to rerun this make CA command again, things we've just updated some of the uh, libraries. Um, see the update certificates bit, so let's just run that again. Yeah, that looks all right. So I can come out of that and remove it. Okay, there's a few other of these security libraries that are going to be installed um, later on. As I say, I think the console kit needs the X suite, uh, poll kit. Uh, we could install this now, but there will be dependency for it. We can do that as and when. So that's not, not important. Um, just before we move on to the X window system, I'm going to install a text browser. Unlikely to use it, but it can be a lifesaver if you're at the terminal. For example, you can't uh, access the machine remotely with SSH. You need to access the internet. Um, we still haven't got a GUI yet, so it, it can be a lifesaver to actually uh, have available. So let's search for that. The one I use is Lynx, but there are two others, Lynx, spelled L-I-N-K-S, and there's this one, W3M, but I've, I, my preference has always been Lynx. So let's go for that one. So this has got the HTTPS URL, so again, this will be another check that the wget is using certificates when it's uh, downloading. So we've got some optional utilities here. Uh, let's have a look at them before we download this. We've got unzip already installed, so we can ignore that. We can install zip as well. And this SHA utils for UU encode is a good idea as well. So what I do when I open these, uh, yeah, I've kept open SSH for after X organ and I let's move that away over here. And I'll get rid of the security. What I tend to do is as these open, the ones furthest on the right are the ones at the bottom of the dependency tree, so they're the ones I'll start with. So you can see if I close this down again, start again, it'll make a bit more sense. So with links, we're installing zip, so I'll right uh, middle click that and a tab appears afterwards. We've already got unzip so I don't need to touch that one. I'm not going to install the send mail and I'm going to install SHA utils to allow you encode encoded documents to be read. So again I'm I sent a click that one and that goes to the end of the list of open tabs. I then go to the end tab and see if there's any dependencies that it requires and I keep on doing that until I'm working basically from the right hand tab all the way back up dependency list if you like or dependency tree back to the original package quite have a quick look at zip that's got no dependencies so it's just these two packages which are tiny which need to be installed before we actually install links so yeah again HTTPS sorry this is going to test wget and assuming this works which I'm sure it will then wget is done that's uh, all working 100% then and yeah, it's connected and downloaded, so that's fine. So let's extract SHA utils. And begin by compiling and uh, configuring and compiling. There's no configure information here, so we just copy and paste 
that information. Okay, and now we can install it. That's all done. Remove it. And now we'll build zip. and install. I've made an exception with installing optional programs purely as I say this this program could potentially be a lifesaver if uh, something went wrong with the SSH server there's no way else of gaining access to the machine you can only access the machine at the physical terminal or in our case a virtual terminal so it's uh, d d definitely worth uh, installing these extra utilities so let's tidy that one up and now we can download and install Lynx itself Extract it. And let's, it's got quite a few config commands there, so let's just copy that bit and see what else there is. So these are all part of the standard install with the ZB. Yeah, basically the, the rationale was the uh, Linux from scratch and beyond Linux from scratch is that we use any libraries that we can use that have been installed by us rather than relying on built-in libraries and I tend to enable things and install optional things where possible to enable extra functionality so that's what these are saying it's uh, enabling support for the libz library and with the, for the bz library and SSL we want to connect to secure websites and so on. So this might be a good one to have, enable NLS, which allows links to print translated messages such as questions and cookies about SSL certificates. So we'll install that. This can do TLS, that's experimental so I'm not going to touch that. That, that could potentially be unreliable so I'll leave that. So that's okay. So we can press enter and run the configure. Okay, and make to compile it.
Okay, yeah, let's build correctly. So you've welcomed us to the world of links. So let's become the root and install it. Okay. Configuration. Right, the proper way to get the display character set is to examine the current locale. However, Lynx does not do so by default as the root user changes setting. So, let's do that. Built in editor and Lynx breaks multibyte characters. This issue affects itself in, manifests itself in multibyte locales. Okay, so this looks like something else we'd want to configure. And then it's talking about um, default editor options. So these are editors that can be associated with links. So that's an option that can be set, default editor. Let's have a look at that ourselves. So VI etc. links. Links.config. So let's search for that, do forward slash default underscore editor. There it is. So, oh, editor. So it's set by default already to VI. Okay. So don't need to do anything with that one. Um, and then the last one it says links doesn't save cookies between sessions so if you want to save cookies then this is something you might want to do and it says there's other system wide settings that can be set in the links config file so that's done let's uh, remove that build and we can actually test it now so let's try www linux from scratch org and there you go there's a, a web page in text so basically this looks the same as an ordinary web browser you just don't get to see any images of course because we're on a, a text console um, and if you never use this before you just use the arrows up and down to move along each link you can press the right arrow to go into the link so I just went into the contribute page there if we wanted to go into the BLFS uh, link see it's highlighted in yellow press the right arrow and you can see we're in the BLFS uh, web page and again you just press down or up to move between each link and you can press the left arrow to go back to where you came from backspace will show you a list a history of uh, web pages you're on so if I go into the BLFS and then for example go down to this link here LFS project homepage which is where I was anyway but I've gone via two other links if I now press backspace you can see the history and then it's just Q to quit so let's try that again with the HTTPS protocol make sure that works right that may not have yeah they haven't got HTTPS actually there's no green padlock on the browser so let's try another one let's try bbc.co.uk yeah that's worked so that's that's fine as well so we've got the unencrypted web pages being served and the encrypted ones so that's, that's fine it all works perfectly so now we've done that let's move on to uh, the xorg suite let's just check what I've got planned for us we've done security yep x windows is the next one and then what I hope to do in this session is to get X Windows loaded and hopefully also a browser if there's time to do that as well. So let's uh, find Xorg. 
Right, there it is there. So this is uh, like part six, if you like. Section six, part six. I don't know what these designations are. I call these chapters these number bits because they uh, increase all the way through the book. But yeah, maybe like section six, this is chapter 24. So this is where we start to build an actual GUI that we can um, use a mouse with. Uh, basically, this whole section is to do with building the GUI. Um, and then we won't be installing these systematically as we will do with all these, because we, we need all these for the, the GUI. But we will be installing these as and when certain uh, packages require them. So, and as I say, I, I hope to have uh, a web browser installed as well by the end of this session. So let's let's see how we go anyway. At least try and get the uh, the X Windows running, which is going to be an extremely basic X Windows, a bit like LFS was an extremely basic operating system. Uh, and we're now building on the operating system and increasing its functionality. This section here is going to build a really, really basic GUI, but it will be a usable GUI that we can do stuff in. Right, so let's work our way through this section. So it gives you a bit of information about how the X Windows used to be just based on something called X386. It's now something called, or uh, an organization called Xorg. And these are all the sections, all the um, parts of the uh, uh, this particular chapter that we're going to work through. We have to work through all of these to make a, a usable system. So, as it has, says here, whereas the previous X Windows using the X386 system used to be uh, like a monolithic installation. Xorg is completely different, it's totally modular, so you pick and choose which bits you need, and obviously there's mandatory ones to get the system going. And it says here that wget is uh, strongly recommended to download the files required. Um, it also says that a complete W get file list is provided each page to download everything basically but it's got a couple of links if you want to pick and choose what you want to download and install uh, I'd recommend just going with what the manual's got until you get to know it if you're particularly interested in making a leaner version of it also recommends having sudo so that this could be scripted and therefore installed automatically each time we build them uh, so we've got that, we're okay with that. And also the following instructions assume the shell startup files have been set up as described in the shell, in the bash shell startup files, which we, we have done already. It's this bit here with these uh, scripts that we did in the uh, previous video. So that's that's okay as well. So because of the number of files and because uh, yeah, this, this, these files are going to be all related, all to do with the uh, X compile. It suggests making a separate directory, which we shall do. So we're going to be doing a lot of stuff in this XC directory. So as with the previous releases of the X Windows system, it may be desirable to install Xorg into an alternate prefix. This is no longer common practice among Linux distributions. The common installation prefix for Xorg on Linux is user, forward slash user. There's no standard alternate prefix, nor is there any exception in the current revision of the file system hierarchy standard for release 7 of the X window system. Alan Coopersmith of Sun Microsystems has recently stated, quote, at Sun we are using, we were using user X11 and plan to stick with it. Only the opt prefix or the user prefix adhere to the current FHS guidelines. So choose your installation, installation prefix and set the XOR prefix variable with the following command. So I shall be installing them into user. Um, two reasons. 
A is the common installation prefix it says here and B it's one of the prefixes uh, used to adhere to the file hierarchy standard guidelines so opt might be a good idea for future upgrades but I think I'll stick with user in this case so we need to run this in with your selected prefix full slash user and then it says throughout these instructions you'll also be using the configure the following configure switches for all of the packages create the xorg config variable to use for this parameter substitution so you notice that this command is using the variable that we've just set so if you have any doubts just echo it to the terminal just to be sure it's set otherwise the prefix will become the root and you'll be installing everything to the root which is not what you want so that's okay we can paste that in and we now have an xorg config variable as well which is as you can see switches which are sent to the configure command and it also says create an etc profile.d xorg sh configuration files for these variables to be available as a root user too so copy that in and basically it makes these two variables available to the root and in fact it would be anybody right of course we've got to do this as root so let's just check that sudo su echo dollar dollar xorg right that's because the environment hasn't changed because I logged in as su so I'm going to come out of that go back in as lfs echo dollar xorg yeah we've got them now config and prefix it's worth doing these checks to make sure right that one hasn't been set that's interesting let's see if we can see them Config's okay, and prefix is empty. Did I do something wrong? Right, what I should do, I'm not sure what I did wrong, but I shall go to the profile.d directory. And yeah, for some reason it hasn't taken the XOR prefix, so all I need to do is add slash user into there save it log out of root re-log in as blfs oops wrong command right now I can type her properly uh, View them again so we've got XOR config is there and correct and XOR prefix is there as well and correct so now they're working and if I do sudo su again echo them dollar XOR right I'm not sure why does that create a new yes I think su I think SEO on its own doesn't doesn't it create a new um, environment. I can't remember now off the top of my head. Let's try that instead. Yeah, that's worked. Yep, yeah, that's worked too. So we've got to remember with these variables when we switch to root that we actually do become uh, the actual root user. Right, so it 
So basically, I'm glad I checked those variables when we became roots because it would have failed that for some reason, I'm not sure why, uh, the XOR prefix that I'd set hadn't propagated down into the uh, into the script that I copied and pasted in. So it's good shows why it's uh, worthwhile uh, uh, checking that these things have been set up properly. Uh, this just explains how uh, this backslash here is working. So it says here, if you've decided to use the standard user prefix, you can omit the remainder of this page and continue at, ut continue at util macros. So obviously these paths here are for a different prefix because users already got bid, lib, package config, etc. But because if we hadn't used user, these directories wouldn't exist and that's what this is all about. Yeah, adding it to the loader as well. Yeah, so we can we can skip all that. So before we go any further, let's go back to where we should be for downloading all this stuff into the XC directory. And we can continue with the first package. Uh, the first few packages are all built individually. I think off the top of my head, I think it's because the configure commands are just a little bit different, but the remainder are all scripted um, to make life a little bit easier. Because because it's so modular, the, the modules are tiny. They don't take long to install at all. Uh, so it is good that the uh, BLFS team have uh, scripted most of it for us. It just makes life a little bit easier. Okay, requirements, XOR build environment, which is where we've just come from. Let's just double check. Yeah, see, there's the make their XC command, so we're okay with the requirements. Let's just get the first package. And as you can see, it's tiny. It's, uh, was it 500? Oh, sorry, 88 kilobytes. It's uh, minuscule. Util macros, and there you go. There's what a dozen files, if that there. So, one more time, let's just check this xorg prefix exists and is pointing to the correct place. Yep, it's got all our switches in. Uh, the prefix is correct, and the others look, look okay as well. So, we can go ahead and run this configure command. Don't worry about this warning about unrecognized uh, option. It's, it is a warning, it's not an error, so just ignore it. Uh, so we need to become the root, and we've got to ensure we have the uh, environment variables now. If I'm right off the top of my head, we can do su minus e, can't we? su dollar xorg. Yeah. Yeah, I shall run a pseudo like that. In fact I probably should be running it like that all the time. Okay, that looks good. So let's do make install. That's done. <laughs> so quick. So tidy that one up. And let's go for the next one. Xorg Proto. Uh, this is where it gets a bit intense and a bit repetitive, so you just got to stick with it and be, be careful you don't make mistakes. Uh, it's quite easy to do, unfortunately. So requirements, didn't see that, but now looking at it, util macros, we've just installed that, so that's okay. Optional, um, I believe we do install some of these later on, but uh, so not, I'm not going to do it extra much extra work for building additional documentation. We'll just go with it as it is. So let's extract that. And run it in. OK. 
okay, that's done, and we can install it. And that's done. To the next one. LibXAU. Requirements, XORG, Proto. That's the one we just come from, so that's okay. So extract and change into it and configure and build it. And install. And tidy it up. So next one. Libex DMCP requirements X or Proto again we've already done that but I've just realised I'm not ticking these off although this is quite straightforward because they're consecutive so it's easy enough just to turn to the uh, X window section and um, uh, just yeah, you I know, see visually that it is uh, a package that we previous, previously installed. So I'll just tick these off. Okay, so extract. And copy and paste. And install it. And we can tidy it up now. And move on to the next one. So again, the only requirement is X, the Excel build uh, environment, which we've already done. So we can just grab hold of the package. And configure. And make install. Tidy up. Yeah, I think these are all done separately because they have uh, optional dependencies. So lib xcb. Requires libxau and xcb proto. I think the uh, that we've already done those, but I think the uh, BLFS team have deliberately put these libraries in in the correct order, uh, which is why all these requirements are coming up as packages were previously installed. Just like this libx dmcp is uh, one of the packages we've already installed. So let's extract this one. Slightly different command here. Nothing to change on the config, so we just copy and paste that. Okay, and we can 
call a command for this. I don't like doing this in case the commands are a little bit different, but I'm making stalls pretty uh, simple and pretty standard. Okay. So let's just tidy that up and move on to the next page. So XORG libraries. You can see we haven't got packages now, it's just a directory. Um, this is because there's multiple uh, packages to be down downloaded. Now we've got a requirement here of font config, so I know for a fact that we haven't got that. So let's center click that one. And libxcb is one we just installed, so we can um, just uh, ignore that because it's done. So let's go to font config now. And what have we got here? Requirement of free type. So we'll sensor click that one to get that tab up. And we've got some optionals which we'll ignore. Go to free type. So that's got recommendations. As I say, I install recommendations. So we'll sensor click that one. Free type is what we've just come from. So that indicates that we've got a circular dependency here. Um, free type requires half buzz and half buzz requires free type. So it's saying first install without it, after it's installed, reinstalled free type 291. Okay. Uh, libpng and we've already got which, so let's go back to the PNG. That hasn't got any dependencies, so we'll start with that one. So none of these packages are true XORG libraries, so what I'm going to do is come out of the XC directory, just so that these other libraries go in the general BLFS package directory. So let's start by getting that package. Okay, and let's extract it. All right, okay, missed that. There's a patch there for Firefox, SeaMonkey and Thunderbird which will be installing all three of these so this is quite important. Oh. Okay, so let's go back into PNG. And this is to support the APNG files. I think they're PNGs with uh, an alpha channel in them. So we'll run that in. So there's no config parameters we need to look at. We can just configure and make. Ticking off lib PNG. A lot of the time you remember that you've installed certain packages, and other times you're not sure, and some of the package names are quite similar to others, so it's definitely worth keeping track of um, what you have installed. I mean, one reasonably reliable way is just to see what packages you've actually downloaded, although, as you see, I've, I've downloaded the package, realize there's a requirement and then I've gone off to do, do that requirement so the fact that the files there doesn't necessarily mean it's been installed um, another way of checking is to search for the program so uh, if you do something like update DB to ensure that the um, sorry got to do this as root uh, ensure that the locate database is up to date and then actually do locate for example PNG fix well it exists 
in our build direction because we're currently still in the process of building it but you'll notice it's not in anything like a bin or s bin or user bin directory so you can see that it hasn't been installed so if we now actually do install it okay that's installed now if we did a locate now it won't, won't find anything different because the database needs to be updated so just do the update db again oh, as a root now when we look for lib, uh, sorry png fix as an example of one of the programs that's installed you'll see it's an executable in the executable directory so you can actually see it as installed so that's probably the most foolproof way of checking uh, that a program is installed um, if it's a library I don't think libraries get put in the uh, locate database let's just check oh it does yeah so you can check for libraries as well it's in the user lib directory But I, I, I'm going to still keep on uh, ticking my list off as we go through, as and when I remember. <laughs> so let's get rid of that one. So now we move on to half buzz. Oh, we've got lots of recommended here. So this is where we start to get bogged down in lots and lots of dependencies. And again, you can see it needs free type, which is a previous requirement. So it's saying after half buzz is installed, reinstall free types. So that means we've got to install free type before we install half buzz. Then we install half buzz and then we go back and reinstall free type. So we need glib, graphite, required for building text live or LibreOffice with system half buzz right we're definitely going to be installing LibreOffice and I think we will be installing text live so actually yeah we don't need text live now that's something for later on uh, where were we half buzz ICU now because I've tabbed away these are all going to go out of order so I'm just going to move that across to there free type we've got Okay, and optional again. Cairo is something that will be installed, but it's optional at the moment, so I'm not going to uh, bother with that. So we go, as I said before, to the right of these tabs, and this has got some optional uh, packages. Now I'm just thinking. Uh, Although LLVM is optional, it is something that gets installed later on, and I'm tempted to build it now, actually. I'm sure LLVM is needed as part of the Xorg installation. So I'm going to center-click that. And that's got CMake. We need that one. You see we're building up this hierarchy of dependencies um, and that's why it's good to keep center clicking to move all the newer packages to the right Ooh, I center click that to it closes it on Firefox when you center click a tab so don't do that <laughs> that's why that did deleted so yeah so I go to see make now that requires something called libuv we also need curl and libarchive uh, qt5 Again, it's something we need, but it's such a it takes such a long time. I think it's about an hour long on this machine. Uh, won't be doing that now. We'll do it when we definitely need it. So let's go to Lib Archive. Um, yeah, this is where it becomes a bit difficult. We're building up quite a stack of packages to build, and yet I know full well that these packages here are required, all three of them. So I'm kind of tempted to go with these now, actually. So let's get these up. As I say, although they're optional here, they are mandatory for other packages that we'll be installing. Uh, let's just hope we haven't got too much here to do. 
And as you can see, we're back in the security directory here. Uh, sorry, chapter where we were originally at the beginning of this session. So this shouldn't take too long. Most of these packages are quite short. LLVM takes a little while to build, but uh, that's not a problem. So let's start with this nettle. Oops, I've highlighted the wrong one, haven't I? Copy link. Okay, so nothing fancy with the configure, just copy and paste. And we can install it now. That's okay. Let's go up and remove that directory. So we can shut that one down. Now we've got LZO, it's got no dependencies, so just grab it and extract it. Again, no fancy configure options. Just paste that in and build it. Okay, and now we can install that one and tidy up. So libxml2 uh, additional downloads. So that's just a test suite. I'm not doing testing, so ignore that. Optional ICU, that's one of the ones we've got lined up to build. Let's have a quick look at that. So that needs LLVM. So that needs CMake. So I think let's move these behind here. Um, graphite ICU. So we've got um, libxml2 which needs ICU 63 ICU 63 needs LLVM LLVM needs CMake so let's just jiggle these around a little bit CMake needs libuv LibUV is on its own, so I think that would be a good order to build these packages in. Yep, so let's go for LibUV next. As you can see, we're, we're now not building the XORG system, we're building packages that it requires, but it's not a problem because a, it requires them, but B, other packages will require a lot of these packages anyway, so it's it's just as well we do these now. If we didn't do them now, we'd have to do them at some other time anyway. So it's, it's up to you how you how, how much you install at any particular time. For example, I saw that QT was an option somewhere. It's mandatory for, I think it's Firefox or SeaMonkey, something like that, so it's going to be done at some time. It just depends on how much you want to do up front. If you don't do it now, you'll, you'll likely to have to do it later. So libuv. So no options for the configure. Just configure it and make it.
And let's install it now. And clean up. All right, okay, see make needs curl and lib archive. So let's drag curl across and lib archive. I've just realized I'm forgetting to tick off all these ones we're doing. And this is coming back round to lib XML. <laughs> So it's kind of a circular dependency here, although ICU is optional, we need it to build lib, uh, lib XML. So uh, yeah, let's just carry on as we are. In fact, I think I'll reinstall lib archive. Um, Let me just see what I've been installing because I've, I've omitted to tick these off. So we've got libuv, haven't we? Okay, so we could um, get on with downloading these now. So let me get. Uh, yeah, this one I'm going to have to reinstall after I've built lib XML with the ICU 63 so to make this work correctly so let's just download this now so we've got without XML 2 switch here so Without it, sets uses XPAT, so that's probably why this is optional. Um, and without Nettle, well, we've got Nettle installed, so we can copy this in and just set the uh, without XML2 switch, but we'll reinstall it to use it. It just shows how, again, how you get you get circular dependencies. Even though this is an optional one, this is self-inflicted really, but it's, it's not a big deal. It's a small package, it doesn't take too long to install. Okay, we can make that. And we could install it now. Okay, so as I say, we can um, I'll mark that one off, and we will reinstall that in a short while when libxml2 has been installed. But we'll leave the without xml2 switch off. So let's remove that one and I'll keep the tab there and we'll move on to curl. Okay, recommended make CA, we've got that. There's loads of optionals here, we're just going to ignore them. Uh, so we'll just get the hold of this package. Now sometimes you go to a package and it says certain programs optional, but it might be optional if you didn't want a certain piece of functionality. In which case it doesn't become optional because you want that functionality, so you do need to install it then. Right, so there's a few options here. Statics included, enable threaded resolver. That's the path for certificates. 
we're not using Kerberos, so I can ignore that. Without SSL with GNU TLS, so I'm not using that, so I can leave it as it is. And if we're using GNU TLS, you have to change the path or add this option for the path. We're not. And with SSH, this parameter SSH support to curl. This is disabled by default, so we want that one added in. So let's copy that and add in that switch there. That should do us. Okay, as a quick resume of what's going to be used for the installation. So we've got SSL enabled. SSH2 support, no, that's interesting because we said with SSH, but it looks like we actually need a switch called with SSH, uh, lib SSH2. There's no other mention of SSH there at all that I can see. So I think what we'll do is we'll rerun that config, but put in, let's add this in addition in case you still do need that with SSH. Let's put with lib SSH2. So maybe it could be that the with SSH is using earlier uh, forms of encryption and lib SSH2, oh, oh hold on. So, SSH2 libs and all libraries are not found. Okay. All oh, right. Okay, that's a separate package. So I'm tempted to install that. Optional. We've got that one. Um, I think we do need to install that at a later time so let's have a look at that one that needs to leave gpg error okay again so we're getting buried down in dependencies and it can seem like this that you're picking up more dependencies than you're actually uh, building and getting rid of so uh, it's being built so let's remove curl we'll start that one from scratch again uh, oh, that's all right. Let's get this lib GPG error. Okay, there's no configure options here, so we'll just go for the configure and make. And we can now install Okay, that's that one done. And the next one we need is this libgcrypt. Oh, let's extract it first before trying to change into the directory. Okay, there's what have we got here? Lib with capabilities. Libcap to support this breaks crypt setup to a six. What's that? Right, I'm not sure if I install that or not. Cap 2. 
right that's not mentioned on the optional so I'm not going to add that in um, so we'll just go for the configure and make Okay, so now we can install. I'm not building the documentation. I haven't got Text Live installed. Um, I think it is one of the packages I've planned to install, but uh, it's not particularly important. So we'll just go for the install, and we skip the installation of documentation because we didn't build it. So that's that done. Uh, sorry, let's remove that. The SSH two. So, copy link. Nothing special here, you can just compile this one. Okay, so that's done. We can install it. Simple make install. And now we can go back to curl. So I let me recall the command I had before. In fact, let's be sensible. Oh, there it was. But uh, if you do control R and then start typing part of the command. Um, it will come across the first reverse match, press Control R again until you get the command you want and that's the one there we want the configure command Right, so now we do have the SSH2 support built in, built in so um, that looks a lot better. So now we can do make. Okay, that's installed. So now we could, uh, sorry, uh, built rather. Now we can install it. We 
Okay. I'll just check off, take that one off. Yep. That's that one. Now we're on to C make. Uh, LibUV. Did we install that one? Yes, we did. See, I've forgotten already. <laughs> so let's. Uh, it's probably because we've done a few, a few packages since then. So we've got the two recommended built. We've got UV built. As I say, things like this QT, uh, I, I would imagine this is some sort of uh, editor for making up the script files. Uh, so if, if you're that sort of person inclined to doing this sort of thing, you probably do want to install QT at this point. Uh, I'm not, and I won't, so I'll, I'll skip it for now. As I say, we'll be building QT later on for one of the bigger packages. So what have we got for this configure QT GUI? Yeah, so it's saying to build a QT based GUI for CMake. I'm tempted to actually build this now you know just so that we can turn that switch on uh, yeah I think I'll do that so let's just remove that directory and let's go to QT find out what that needs right that's quite a lot actually yeah I think I'll leave that for another day another uh, session let's just go for See make as it is without this editor. And the rest we can keep as it is, so we'll just copy all of that.
Okay, so that's built. We can um, now install it. And that's that one done. So now we do LLVM. What have we got here? We've got a package. CLang. Yes, these are worth downloading these extra packages. Okay, so let's extract. Main package. Uh, so if you installed, uh, sorry, downloaded the optional packages, installed into the source tree, but running the following commands, so We'll copy all of that. So we create a separate build directory. Let me just copy this bit first. And then the like the configure command. And then we'll just cross reference this. With the options we've got here, so we've got that one there. Build static, so that's on release to build optimizations, targets, switch to enable building for the same target as the host, and also for the R600 AMD. AMD GPU and the Mesa R six hundred and Radeon SI drivers. The BPF target is required to build video for Linux utils. Default is all you can use a semicolon separated list. Valid targets are host, x86 spark, etc. So looks like we need to modify this. So let's to control C there, put a hash in there, recall that and press O. Oh, didn't expect that to happen. Oh that's because uh, it's on separated lines. Let's um let's copy this a bit at a time. So we've got Host AMD GPU and BPF. So let's keep host. Don't need the AMD GPU because we haven't got one of them. We need BPF because I think we install V4L later. And I think X86 would be a good bet as well. X86. I think that will do so we can um, copy the rest of this in now. Just check the other configurations. Okay, that's already on there. Shared lips equals on. If you instead of right, okay, I think that's okay as it is. So let's press enter there.
Okay, that's configured. We can run Ninja to start building it.
Okay, so that's completed. So now we can install it. Didn't install Sphinx, so we can miss that. But we did download the optional packages, so we build those now. Is that not working? I meant okay, do we need to be in the directory above? Nope. Sorry, this is the optional packages. So we can skip that these it's these packages here I think it's referring to. And it's the um, documentation for those optional packages, I think that's what it's referring to. So I'm not sure if this is... The optional packages, oh it's the actual LLVM by the looks of it, so I think we need to do this one. No, perhaps not. Perhaps this is all the optional. Uh, uh, it's the documentation that would have been built with these optional packages here, the oxygen and so on. So it probably means these will fail as well. Yeah. Okay, so that's that one done. We can remove that. That was one of the bigger packages, by the way. I think it takes, uh, yeah, 1.8 gigabytes. So now we can install ICU. Done loading quite slowly. <laughs> oh, this is picking up speed though, somewhat.
Okay, so that's now downloaded. Probably took longer than it'll take to um, install. But um, obviously the server's quite slow or busy. So let's um, extract it. So it's just a little note there saying that if CLang++ is available using in the mistaken beliefs that G++ might not support C++11, though configure is tested for that. If using G++, there will be an unnecessary warning at the end of the configure. Building with G++ also takes longer than the estimated SPU shown. So there's nothing to configure here. I'll just configure and build it. Okay, so now we can install it. We can install. Let's use the right command. Okay, that's complete. So let's tidy up. And now we can install LibXML2. So uh, it's just saying something about um, Python, Python 3 modules, <coughs> excuse me, um, needing to be installed to function properly in some packages not built properly if Python 3 modules not available. Um, the old Python 2 module can be built after LibreXML 2 has been installed. So I think, as I remember, we can deal with that when we come to uh, installing Python 2, because I do think we need it. Um, yep, so we don't need the tests. Uh, I'm sure I just downloaded two copies of this. No, I didn't. So what we got for configure, 
his history with Parson. Right, okay, so there, there, are the, there are instructions by default uses Python 3, which is what was installed in um, Linux from scratch. So, but it's saying that um, there's obviously the option there to build with uh, Python 2. So we've got ICU installed, so we can use this option here. And with threads, I'm not sure. Not sure if that needs another package. Let's try it. So we'll paste the configure in, add in with ICU, and we'll see if this configures with this. Well, it seems to have configured okay, so let's try and build it. Okay, so that's built. We can um, <coughs> now install it. Yep, that's okay. So now we can go back to LibArchive which has an optional optional dependency on libxml, we can rebuild this to use um, libxml2. So let's clear up libxml2 and extract libarchive again. So same as before, except this time we don't need to put without xml2 in. We can just run it as it is. Okay, so now we install it again. Okay, that's done. And get rid of that tab now. So now we're going to install Graphite 2. Required is CMake, which we've installed. Um, now we've got a few optional dependencies here which are actually dependencies we need so let's just see what these require GLA requires libxsl2 and PCRE um, so hot right okay so half buzz Half buzz needs graphite. Graphite needs half buzz. So it says you'd need to install, need to build graphite 2 without half buzz first. So this is getting a little bit complicated now. Um, tell you what, let's get rid of glib out of the way first. That needs let's put 
graphite there. Then needs Libex SLT and PCRE. Libex SLT needs Libex ML2, which we've installed. So that's okay. And it recommends dotbook XML and dotbook XSL. Um, Loan loss direct dependency. Many applications built using libxslt will expect dotbook XML and XSL to be present, so that's why they're recommended. And it's saying here that libxslt is a Python module is not needed for any packages in BLFS, but various packages may install Python 2 modules which reference it. So it's kind of ambiguous really whether we need it or not. I tend to install it actually. Um, we did Libgy Crypt if I remember correctly. Let's just check that on the list. Yeah, literally crypt have got. So let's look at this libxml2 for Python 2. Right, yeah, that's a Python 2 module. I wonder if there's one for the Python 3 as well. Let's do a search for that. Right, it is only for Python 2. So I would suggest that we should also install Python 2. Let's put that at this end. Python 3 bindings are built as part of LibreXML 2. We did that. Oh, it's actually done as part. Oh, it's this bit here, wasn't it? Yeah, so that's why there's only a Python 2 module. So we need to install Python 2 beforehand. So that can go there. Sorry, this side, isn't it? Python 2. And what else did GLib need? PCR read up XSLT. PCR -E. That needs foul grind, which I'm not going to use. So <clears throat> let's put PCR -E here, it means that's on its own. And let's install this next. Right, so this has got a big configure, so I need to check carefully all the uh, <clears throat> options. So I know we Unicode properties. Yeah, but it's likely that we'll build GLib with the PCRE system switch. So we'll need that. We'll need that one, that one, those two. <clears throat> um, yeah, that looks good. And that last option is not included, but that sounds like a useful option to have. So let's just copy the config statement and then add this last switch. Okay, again, there's a sort of status on what the configure has found and what it's going to use and so on. So, sometimes worth just checking that. So, that looks all okay. So, we can just build it now.
Right, so now we can install that. Let's copy that again. Oh, right, okay, that should have been a pseudo issue. SU. You see it says permission denied, it's because the SU only works on the first command. So let's do it like that. That's better. Always worth checking what the result of the last action was in case there is errors like that. So we've done with PCRE. So now let's build Python 2. Additional documentation, probably not that important. And remember, Python spelt with a capital P if you're having trouble extracting it. And this does allow us to. Um, build certain modules later on for Python 3 and Python 2. So I've got quite a juicy configure there again, so we just check everything. System XPAT. So that's forcing it to build against the XPAT that we've built in Linux from scratch. Same for system FFI. Ensure pip. So that's making sure that's being built. So that's for 32-bit Unicode support. And what's this? If you switch to build a Python DBM model against DB instead of GDBM. Well, I think we had GDBM in Linux from scratch, so I think that would suffice. So we can just copy that configure and make command as it is and run that in. Right, that's done. Um, so let's install this. Okay, so this next bit's saying that Python 2 is in maintenance mode and Python 3 is recommended for development um, so that the documentation for Python 3 should be used but obviously if you're using Python 2 you want the documentation for that instead and to use the Python docs variable to uh, control 
which documentation you view. So we can install it anyway. And if it's important then that explains how to how to switch between the two. And there's this export variable to configure it to look at the version 2 documentation, but we won't put that in because we'll leave it pointing at version 3, Python 3. Um, I'll just have a quick look at Python 3's here to reinstall again. Okay, so it's saying the only reason to rebuild it here is if optional modules are needed. So it's because of Berkeley DB and SQL Lite. Um, I can't honestly remember if we need to rebuild it or not, so I'll leave it as it is for the moment. So I'll get rid of that, and we'll just go ahead and install this Python 2 module for LibXML. So let's come out of this and clean Python 2 up. And let's get this module. Oh yes, of course. I just realised I've downloaded the package twice. I was thinking it was a separate um, uh, package, but it's not. It's the same package as just switches to um, alter how it's uh, created. Um, so lib xml to default slash. Yeah, see, there's that file name there with a dot one on the end so it just shows off downloaded it twice so I'll just get rid of that uh, the rm command and we'll do these commands to install the python 2 module I don't actually see anything that refers to Python 2, but I just have to take it that it's that's what it's done. So let's install it. Right, okay, we can see there it's written into a Python 2.7 directory. And these directories here have got 2.7 on them, so that looks good. And we can get rid of that. and remove the source directory so now we've got dotbook xsl um, so let's download that one and there's a patch and some more documentation so there's a few optional packages here if you want epub style sheets and zip3 for epub3 documents and so on so if you want that then you'd need to jump in and um, compile those packages doing uh, cd dot it's better so we run the patch in and the optional documentation and 
and there's nothing to configure here. I think it's just a bit of copying. So we go into this root. Copy these commands in. Yep. If you download the optional documentation, install the documentation with the following command. So that's that one. If we're installing the current version of Docbook XL nons over a previous version, which we're not, we can ignore that then. So we need to create these commands as the root and then it says occasionally you may, may need to, you may find the need to install other versions of Excel style sheets as some projects reference a specific version one of example is BLFS 6 which required a certain version etc in these instances you should install any other required version its own version directory and create catalog entries as follows and substitute in the right version number so we don't need to do that so we're done with that package and we can clear up and remove the tab so now dot xml so this needs uh, let me just tick this off my list dot xml Okay, so this needs, we've got that one, SGML common we haven't got, and I can't remember if we did unzip or not. So look, no we didn't, we've got zip and unzip, so we need that one as well. So let's fetch that one. And extract it. Oh, yes we did. Did I miss it? Yeah, there it is there. Just seen that the fact that we've got a download with a dot one after it. So let's just get rid of that. We can close that down. So it's Gmail common. That's got no requirements, no dependencies. Let's fetch that and it's patch okay so to install it we patch it and then run auto reconf And now we can configure. There's no configuration f information or nothing for the configure itself, so we can just copy and paste that. Right, so let's get that ticked off. Gmail common is done. So we can install it. So let's see do we want to see SU. Copy and paste this. So as a hint for upgrading, we're not doing that, so we can ignore it. And that's that one done. So now we can do dotbook XML. Oh, what have we done there? Copy link that should be. Right. 
Right, this is a zip file. Yeah, so we need to create a temporary directory. So let's call it DXML. Then unzip dot book XML. Okay. So as the root, we do those commands. And create or update and populate the etc XML dot book catalog. So we'll just copy all that lot. And that lot as well. Above installation creates the files under those catalogues in order to in order to utilize top XML DCTV 4.5 and any version 4 is requested in system identifier. You need to add the additional statements to the catalog files. If you have any docbook XML DTDs referenced below already in your system, remove these entries from the for command below. Issue commands as a root user. Well, we shouldn't have anything, so we can just run that all in. And that's done. So that's docbook XML. Okay, that one hasn't tied it up after itself, so I'll just do sudo remove that. So now we're in a position to do lib xslt. Right, there's no configuration option, so just copy and paste that. And install it. Tidy up, and I'll just tick that one off. Let's see, it's easy to see what section one, chapter nine. good. We can get rid of that and now we can install glib. Let's see that one. We will be installing dbus at some time but it's only for tests. We've now got these two installed. We haven't got that one installed so um, all right, it's saying there's additional runtime dependencies should be installed before GTK plus ATK etc. So we haven't done them. So this is a good time to install this now. So let's get that one up. Requires glib, right? So that means that we've got to install glib and then immediately install Gobjet's in introspection. So let's grab this one then. And a patch. Okay, so tar. So 
So let's run in this patch. There's a warning there about upgrading from previous versions, so it doesn't apply to us. Let's just check these options. Man pages being built, disable supports for SE Linux, which we haven't got. API, we don't need that, so we can just copy and paste all that in. Uh, it's done. Now there's a warning there about error no ID for constraint link and when the install's done we've actually received some of them already but it says they're harmless so we can ignore that. So as a root we'll install it. Okay. So that's that done. So now we can install this object introspection. We've got glib now, we've got which. Um, Cairo we're going to install anyway, but it's only required for tests here. So we can go for this now. Just check these and then we do to get talk. Doc, we don't need the API and the switch to ensure Python 3 is used instead of Python 2, so that's okay. I'll just copy and paste that. These have been Python 3 does not exist. That's interesting. Python 3M exists. Has it been Python 3 exist? Has it been Python 3? How unusual. Python 3 is a sim link to Python 3.7. Um, and it works, the sim link works, so I don't know why that configure command is not working. Maybe it doesn't like Let's see if it can find it. Yeah, definitely can't find it, so I don't know why well, that's not working. Wait, 
Ah, right. Sorry, I thought we'd install which, and we haven't. That's why it's failing. Which command not found. So let's go and install that. I thought we'd already done that one. So let's remove that. So no, the reason why I remove them is because if you leave them there, basically you don't know where, what state the directory is in. At least if it's removed, you know you're starting from scratch again. So let's get which. There are two witches here. There's a, a an actual program and there's a script, which is quite simple, but it's probably preferable to have the program. It's probably got more functionality um, built into it. So this is simple configure make and make install. Nothing spectacular about this package as far as compiling is concerned. Okay, that's done. So now we can go back to object introspection. And we can copy and paste this in. Right, so that's done, we can just install it now. And that's that one done. So, now we've got to work out this uh, dependency with these three package, three type these three packages, sorry, these three type half bars and graphite. So let's start getting again. Free type needs half buzz. So it's saying here to install half buzz. Sorry, no, it's saying to install free type without half buzz. And then after it's installed to reinstall free type. And it's saying the same thing here. After half buzz 2.31 is installed, reinstall free type. And half buzz needs half buzz needs graphite. And graphite needs free type. We'd need to build graphite 2 that are half bus first. Right, so it looks like we need to build free type first of all and reinstall it after half bus has been installed. So let's go ahead and do that. So there's the package and some documentation. Um, right, libpng, did we do that? I think we did. libpng, yeah, that's there. That's okay. And we've got which now as well. So, tar.sf. Yeah. 
Okay, let's extract the documentation we downloaded. And then we've got some commands here with the configure what we've we got. So we can paste that in. Enable free type config. That's about a man page. Right, we need to put this in without a half buzz because we haven't got it installed yet. And there's no other options there. So let's run that in. So again, there's another circular dependency. And we, we get around it by disabling the dependency of one of the packages. And then we go back and install that package after that dependency has been fulfilled. So now we can run make. Okay, now we go to the root user and install the package and install the op optional documentation. Okay. So we'll leave that because we need to come back to it. Let's look at this half buzz again. So half buzz needs graphite. Right, so it's saying we need to build graphite first without half buzz here. Then we can go and build half buzz. Then we can build graphite again and then I think we can build free type again. And I think that will fulfill all the requirements. I think that's right. Let's try it. <laughs> so this said to just remove some tests. We'll stick that in just in case. So there's an option there to turn on verbose build mode. Let's use that to see what happens. At least uh, if we can see more, if there's any problems, we're likely to see more information about why the failure happened. Let's build the documentation. Nice and quick and install. And install the documentation. Okay, so this may be API documentation that needs things like Doxygen, so we can ignore that then. So let's go to half buzz, graphite is needed, and graphite that needed half buzz didn't it I think, yeah so We'll do half buzz next. That should have access to free type and graphite now. So let's get this one. OK, 
Okay, so the configure command is Godject. We did install glib, so we can leave that in. Graphite 2 support, which is required for text live, like I say, we'll probably build that towards the end. Even though it may be more useful up front, but uh, it's just really for building documentation, which, yeah, it's kind of here or there, here, here or there, really. If it's easy to install, I install it. Um, obviously, if you're doing a system where you need the documentation, then you will be definitely be interested in building that up front. And LibreOffice is one of the packages we'll be installing as well. So that's good. And we don't need the API documentation, so we'll just copy that command as it is. Okay, so we can install that. And tidy up. So that's that package gone. Let's reinstall Graphite now. This is about installing Graphite font. So we can look for that afterwards. So same as before. Let's just do the same commands. Turn the verbose on again. So that half buzz has been found, but it's probably something automated. So we can just do make. Docs. And now, there's the root user. Install it. And I think this failed before, didn't it? Yep. So it says to download at least one suitable graphite font. Now it doesn't actually tell us where we need to put it. So I'm not really sure what to do with this when if we do download. one of them. Well, I 
don't know which of these to choose. I've heard of this one. Let's go for that one. Well, let's download it and if we find we need it we can attempt to install it so let's get this file here basic one and just uh, download that um, let's Actually, unzip that and have a look in case there's some documentation might tell us where to put it. There's nothing in that one. Uh, I think, being as there's no instructions in the book, it's probably not strictly necessary from a, a BLFS point of view. Um, I'm sure if it was necessary to get things working, uh, there would be instructions in the BLFS book. So this probably takes would take a bit more um, research around the uh, website we've just been on to find out how to uh, how to install this particular font. So we'll take it that's installed correctly, and we'll reinstall FreeType. So we had the docs, let's extract them again. And then we just need to copy this as it is this time. We don't need the without half buzz switch because we have actually installed it. Okay, we can reinstall it and reinstall the documentation just in case it's been deleted as part of the configure or the build or the previous install. And that's that done. Uh, okay, so now we can go ahead and install a uh, font config so let's just check the dependencies again we've installed the required free type um, we haven't got this one we've got this one I don't think we've installed that one yet, but I think we may well do eventually.
So we we'll start by removing a file to make sure it's regenerated. And then we've got a configure command. Disable docs, avoids building documentation, the release table includes pregenerate. Okay, so we just need to copy this as it is then. Okay, um, so we can now install that. So we did not remove the several docs parameters from the config command, you can install the pre generated documentation, so we did remove it, so we can do this. And it's done. So let's tick that one off. Okay, so now we're back to the XORG libraries <laughs> where we were <clears throat> an hour or two ago. So we're ready to do some automated building, help save our fingers and our sanity. Um, and as I said before, the BLFS team have been very good in providing us the information to automate this build. So the first thing I should do is go back to the XC directory and we copy this list of files that are going to be fetched with their checksums so that they're also uh, verified. And here's a few commands to download and check these files. So just wait that for for that lot to download won't take too long. Okay. So now the note here describes um, because this is automated the installation needs to be done as the root user as we've been doing manually so it describes three ways of um, possibly getting around this and they've come up with a little function that gets added to as part of the shell so if you copy this and paste it in We've now got this function as root, which can be called um, as part of the uh, automated build. Uh, this bit's to do with testing, so we're not going to look at that. Um, now, this is the script that we'll be running to build each of these package packages in order. And what we do is we start a session or spawn a session of bash. Uh, with a switch that will cause bash to quit if there's an error. So that will be make it obvious when something's gone wrong. So we just type that in and then we can copy this little script and watch the packages build for us in front of our eyes.
Okay, so that's installed those packages. So we can type exit now to come out of that uh, extra shell we spawned. And there's some information there about some modifications we could have made to the switch. Well, we couldn't actually because we haven't got that package installed, although we will be installing it and we haven't got that package installed either. Uh, it says if you've chosen to install Xorg into user, then no further configuration is necessary and you can skip the rest of this section. So we can go back up and go on to the next package which is libxcbutil <coughs> so this looks like the xcbutil has got dependency on libxcb so we'll load that one up and we've got some more dependencies here um, Oh, libxcb is one we've already done, isn't it? So we should be able to just grab hold of this and compile it. So configure and make. And make install. remove the package and move on to the next one XCB util image so this has only got a requirement of the package we've just installed Same commands as before to configure and install. Okay, so tidy up. Oops. We go to the next package, which is XCB Util Key Sims. Again, requirement of the package we've already installed. So we just fetch it and install it. That's that one complete. So 
So XCB util, render util next. Again, these are all pretty much the same. Configure and compile. And let's recall the install command. Make install, that's okay. And clean up this one. So the next one is XCB util WM. Optional require uh, optional dependency on this one for Doxygen which is, um, I think, believe it's used for building uh, documentation. Which I haven't installed. Uh, I think I've installed this once in the past, many years ago, and it, it adds um, a, not a significant amount of time, but a noticeable amount of time to the build. So um, probably not as much as I think on modern PCs, but certainly when I... Um, was last using PLFS in Anger, which was probably over, over 10 years ago. Um, it, it did add a noticeable amount to the uh, build time back then on the older machines. So let's fetch this package. Uh, configure and compile and make install ok that's that one done so next one is XCB util cursor and build it. And install. Okay, so now we move on to quite an important package, Mesa. So this has some dependencies. Xorg library, which is what we've just been installing. We've got libdrm, which is not DRM in the sense you might know, especially from a Windows world. Um, uh, I can't remember what it stands for now, but it's it's nothing to do with digital rights management. It's to do with the way um, images are displayed on the screen. And Mako, which is a Python module by the looks of it. So Mako has a dependency markup safe. And Marco markup safe will just build by itself. So let's go out of the XC directory because this is a Python module, so it's therefore not part of the X installation. Let's copy this and fetch it. So we build it and in 
install it. That's done. Okay, that's left a file behind, so I'll just remove that. Now we can install Mako. So this is just an install command, no configure or build, that's done. And again that's left files behind, so we can just remove them as root. Yep, there it says there, uh, direct rendering manager is what DRM stands for in this context and it needs Excel libraries which we've got Cairo for tests, we've got some of these installed now in fact we've got all three of these installed even though they're optional so that's ok, we can fetch this one now Build it. There's no extra configuration options, so just fire away with that. And install it. done. Okay, we've got some recommended packages, so let's go through them. We've got libvdpow, LLVM, we've got Widen protocols required for Plasma 5, which we'll be installing. So let's see what these require. Wayland Protocols needs Wayland. That needs libxml which we've got and optional. There's nothing really particularly of interest there, it's all to do with um, documentation. So let's get on with installing Wayland. So there's no extra switches for configure. Um, if you are building the documentation, you've got these packages installed, then you'll want to remove this switch from this command up here. But for this demonstration, we'll take the configure command as it is. <coughs> Wayland and we can install it now. It's done. Wayland protocols, no dependencies apart from the package we just installed. Simple configure make and make install. I 
and that's complete. Okay, so shut that one down. So lib vdpal. This requires the libraries which we've got optional, look to be the usual documentation packages, and there's a runtime dependency of Mesa. So we haven't got Mesa installed, but it's saying it doesn't require it until runtime. So that's okay. We don't need it to compile. So let's copy that link and download the package. Extract. And fairly simple configure make and install. Make install. So let's take that one off. his own section. Okay. So let's just check Mesa again. We've got the libraries, we've just installed DRM and Mako. We've just installed libvdpal, we've got LLVM optional packages, we've got these three installed. So I think that's good to download that one now. Let's get rid of this package. And download Mesa and its patch. So what it's saying this patch is purely to install two demo programs and it's not needed if you install the Mesa demo packages, uh, package, sorry. Um, but as you can see, that's a link off site, so that's not something I'll be installing as it's uh, it's outside the book. Of course, if you're feeling confident, you know what you're doing, and you're feeling better about BLFS and so on, you can um, compile that yourself, then you know, by all means, go ahead. Um, but the two demo packages are, are adequate one's a visual test, and the other one's kind of a status report on the. Um, GL capabilities of the uh, graphics card. So we'll just do with the patch. All, right, all these downloads seem to be taking a long time for some reason today.
Okay, so that's downloaded. Let's extract it. And let's install the patch for the two demos that the BLFS team have provided us. Now it's saying select which drivers you wish to install. The available drivers are i915, Nuvo, R300, R600, Radeon SI, Freedrino, PL111, SVGA, SW Rest, SWR Tegra, V3D, VC4, Verge, L, ETNA, VIV, and IMX. If the Gallium drivers are not specified, the default is that lot. Modify the command below for any desired drivers. The list of drivers below will cover most modern video cards. So we haven't got a real video card. Um, so I think the two I'm going to install uh, the SVJ and the software raster um, cards because as I say it's not a real video card it's certainly not an i915 which is the Intel it's not needing to have a driver for Nvidia cards nor Radeon um, and none of the others look familiar so SVJ is pretty standard and the software rasterizer I suppose that will be a a renderer that's written in, in software rather than using the cap hardware capabilities of the video card. So let's copy that and just modify it to those two options. Let's see how we go with that. And I've got quite a few commands on the configure here. So there's that variable we just defined. What have we got here? Enable ISMESA is set. Enable XA is set. Enable GLX TLS is there. Enable GBM. That's not there. This switch enables building the MESA graphics buffer manager library. So, not sure why that's not there in the example but we can add it in. It can only provide extra functionality and hopefully it won't conflict with anything else. Um, enable SysFS. Use this switch to enable simple PCI identification method requirement for building DRI on systems without UDEV. Right, well we will be building UDEV. Or sorry, we have got UDEV as part of the uh, Linux from scratch that was installed, so we don't need that switch. So let's copy this and Add in the extra switch. Now it could be that this switch is left over from previous builds and it's not required or it's not part of this version of Mesa because um, it's a bit unusual that it's here but there's no other explanation um, as to what this buffer library is. Um, there's certainly no warning saying you know if you install this this might not work or it'll be incompatible with this package so We'll see how we go with it. Okay, let's quickly check what the config has found. So it's building OpenGL, which is what Mesa is all about, and it's building the embedded versions 1 and 2 as well. DRM platform, so it's building these DRI drivers, even though we didn't specify them, um, unless it's telling us that's what it's capable of doing. 
because the SVGA one's not there. Um, so this turns about platforms, other VMs been found. Alright, oh, okay, so yeah, it was the Gallium drivers we specified, so it has picked them up. So that's okay. Some flags that have been set, some macros, so that looks okay. It's found Python. So let's, I think we've still got this. Uh, yeah, so just unset and we can run the make.
Okay, so that's built. Um, now we need to build the demos as we run the patching for these two demos. That's done, so we can install them and the package. and some optional documentation as well. Okay, so that looks like, let's complete that one. So, we'll remove Mesa. And we can move on to the next package which is xbit maps right I'll actually move that means a package into XC means it's um really underneath the XORG part of the book just keep everything together and I'll go back into XC to build xbit maps. So this needs util macros, is that one we've already installed? Don't believe it is. Let's look at what util macros has given us. Oh, it looks like it installs a directory, let's see if we've got that. It's there. We can also do a quick find from the BLFS directory for the name of this package, which is Util Macros. Just to be sure. Right, okay, so it was there. I missed it. So there's a good chance that we've installed that. Let's just go and download this package. Extract it. And configure it. And install it. Okay, next section, next part is XORG applications, and this part is automated again. So, um, looks like we've got some preparations to do. I think we've got libpng already installed. Let's just check that. Yep, that's there. Means we've done, XBit Max we've just done, and XCB Util we've already got. Optional, we've already got Linux PAM, so that's okay. So we can copy this list of files in. So these are all XORG applications. Now let's download them. Okay, and all the MD5s have passed as well. So, same procedure as before, they've got a little uh, function, bash shell function, 
Um, we should already have it, but let's copy it anyway in case they've altered it slightly for this part of the manual. Um, and as before, we create a new child shell which will exit if there's any errors. And we can build the packages with this set of commands. And we'll just wait for them to build now. Okay, so they've all installed, we can exit that shell. Then it says, unless you install the optional dependencies, remove an undocumented script, which is reported to be broken. Let's just check back to see what optional dependencies we've got. Well, we've got one. Uh, it says only if you wish to try to run the undocumented X key host script. So I think we can remove that. Um, as we don't have two of those optional packages. Okay. So those are all the programs we've just built and installed. So we can move on to Xcursor themes now. Just go back up to the XC directory. And requirements of the application is just installed so we can just go ahead and download this and extract it And now we've got simple make and install. And that's complete. So now we can move on to Xorg fonts. That needs Xcursor themes, which we just installed. 
and this is another set of packages that are built with automation. So let's create the list of files, fetch the files and check the signatures. Again we'll copy and paste this function in even though it's probably the same in case there's any subtle changes. Start a new shell with an uh, option to exit at, at an error and build and install them. Okay, so now we can exit the shell. And so when all the fonts have been installed, the system must be configured so that font config can find the true type font since they are outside of the default search path of user share fonts. So make some links to the XORG true type fonts directories by running the following commands as the root user. So let's become the root. Oops. And put these commands in. That's done. So let's just move back up and move on to the next package which is X keyboard config. So requirements of the XOR libraries which we're in the process of building up. Let's fetch the package. Extract it and build it. And there's just an explanation here about this switch. Yeah, so now we can just copy that in. And install it. Okay, so now we can move on to XORG server. Right, so again this is a quite an important package and it has several requirements. So Pixman XORG fonts is where we've just been installing stuff from. X keyboard config we've just done. So let's get Pixman installed. This needs GTK2 and libpng and I think I've already checked a little while ago but let's just check again to be sure that we have libpng. Oh, that's wrong. It should be like that. Yep. So that's pretty indicative that we've installed that. So let's go to GTK2. This needs ATK, GDK, PixBuff and Pango and a recommended high colour theme. So let's start with this high colour icon theme. So let's move out of the XC because it's not part of the actual XORG um, suite itself. Copy that. So configure and install it. Okay, and I'll just mark it off on the list. Okay. that one done so we can go to pango that requires font config which we've already installed 
must be built with three type and half bars which we've installed through BD which is bi-directional uh, fonts and glib I believe we've already installed as well let's check that one as well oh sorry it's in the current directory now isn't it yep glib and we've got a recommendation for Cairo, so let's load that one up. And Xorg libraries, which we're building. And a couple of optional, so let's go and look at these, um, these ones now. Right, so it looks like we've got another circular dependency here. Cairo needs Pixman, and Pixman needs GTK, which we're in the process of building yeah it says circular dependency between Cairo and half buzz so saying if Cairo is built for half buzz it is necessary to rebuild Cairo after half buzz in order to build Pango so didn't mention the Pixman circular dependency Oh, sorry, Pixman's from Xorg server, so that's that's not a problem. But Pixman needs GTK. And GTK needs Pango. Pango needs Cairo, so it's kind of... It is a circular dependency, but not a direct one. So Pixman needs GTK. That needs Pango. Right, so Cairo is recommended, but not not required. So what we'll have to do is build um, Pango without Cairo, which will allow us to build GTK which will allow us to build Pixman. We can then build Cairo, which needs Pixman, and we can then rebuild Pango to take advantage of Cairo. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so we'll just put Cairo to one side at the moment. So let's build Fribidi next because Pango needs that, so that's one of the requirements. Um, did we build? I think we built this object in introspection. It does come up in quite a few of the packages, so let's just check that one because if we haven't, yes, we have. As I was say, if we haven't built it, it's worth building because it does um, appear in a lot, of, a lot of packages as a requirement. So let's go for Fribidi first. You can see the complexity of uh, BLFS is down to dependencies and where there are circular ones working out the hierarchy that's required to successfully build all of them and and gain the um, functionality that's required whether it's optional or indirectly or directly um, a requirement. So let's get, get this one. And it's all about getting down to the bottom of that dependency tree um, and building those ones first. You can remove them off that tree and then the ones above that become the bottom of the tree and you just work your way back up to where you started from. So, fribbity. There's no options or anything here we just copy and paste the commands that have been provided for us in the book and we can just install this ok 
Okay, so that's for Biddy. Let's mark that one off. Chapter 10, that's in. Okay, so that should allow us to build Pango. It could be the Pango won't build without Cairo, but there, there's no indication that that's the case. And if that is the case that it won't build without it, then hopefully there's a switch that we can say there's no Cairo library to, to build against. But let's see how we go with it. So again, it's just a simple configure and build. Right, okay, so it has actually failed with Cairo missing. All oh, right, okay, I missed that. GTK is actually optional so on Pixman. So let's build Pixman first. Let's remove Pango. Fetch Pixman. Extract it. We'll come back and reinstall Pixman once GTK Plus is installed because it's uh, it's one of the packages that's considered to be a core package, you know, essential package. So um, the fact that Pixman can use this, this package, this toolkit, um, it's worth rebuilding it with it installed. So Pixman. Straightforward configure and make. Install it. Okay, so we can remove that now. So as I say, I'll rebuild this after GTK has been built. So I'll leave that tab up. I'll switch back to Cairo and start that one again. Uh, sorry, not Cairo. Yes, it is Cairo, isn't it? So that Pango, yeah, Pango needs Cairo, right? So we need to fetch this one.
Okay, so that was a bit slow downloading again, but uh, at least it's downloaded. So let's extract that. And you can install it. We've got some configure options here. Enable T. Enables an experimental T service backend. All oh, right. Okay. It's, although it's experimental, it's required if using system installed Cairo with Mozilla applications. So leave that in there. Enables several experimental functions. So we'll leave that off. That one. Experimental OpenGL surface. Leave that one, and we haven't got GTK doc installed, so we'll just take this as it is. Okay, so that's installed, uh, sorry, built, let's install it now. Okay, so that's complete. So now we should be able to successfully build Pango. So let's copy these instructions in again, these commands rather. Yep, that's found it and it's building, so that's good. Okay, and we can install that now. That's all done. So GDK picks buff needs GDIB, which we've got, LibJ Big Turgo, which we haven't, Lib PNG we have. Shared my info, I don't believe we have. Let's check. No, that's not there, so let's get that one. Recommended lib, lib RSVG, so we haven't got that one. LibTIFF, we haven't got. And the XOR all libraries we're in the process of installing. So let's go to the back end of this. Recommended CMake, which we've got. Optional free glut required for TIFF GT. What's it say about that? Doesn't say much. Displays a stored image in a TIFF file. Now that might be worth having. So let's let's grab free glut as well. So this needs CMake and Mesa, which we've got and recommended glue, so we haven't got that one. Let's grab that as well. Okay, so it looks like that's a good place to start.
So quite a straightforward installation this one. Install it and it's done. So free glut, let's grab that. So we've got a quite a big configuration here, let's just check. Uh, so it's saying one of the options is disable building optional demo programs. Note that if you choose to build them, their installation must be done manually. Demo programs are limited and installation is not recommended. Okay, so we'll go with that. And do not build a static library. So I think we can just copy and paste these commands and take them as they are. and install okay it's done let's clear it up so the next one we've got is libtiff Just check something. Right, okay, so let's grab this one. Uh, I just realized that one of the optional packages is one we've got lined up to install libjpeg turbo. Let's just have a quick look at that. Let's put this here. And this needs CMake, which we've got NASM or YASM. Now, these are both assemblers. And I was reading about these the other day and um, to find out which was the preferred one. And as far as I remember, YASM's like a rebuild of NASM. And some people are suggesting that the rebuild is a lot better than the original. However, other people had different opinions, so I did find an article which basically said that if you install them side by side and just let the packages decide which ones they want to use. So, although it says all there, we'll, we'll install both of them and, as I say, just let the package, unless there's anything that says otherwise in the book where the BLFS team prefer one over the other, we'll just install them both and... Uh, let the packages pick and choose. So Yasm optional dependencies. We've got Python, Scython's an off BLFS package. You can see it's in bold. It takes us to the Scython web page, so we'll ignore that. So we'll just grab hold of this and install this one. Okay, let's install that, and that's done. So NASM, let's grab that and its optional documentation.
So the first command is to put the documentation into the source tree, expand it and put it in there. Then we can configure and build the package. Okay, and let's install it now. And install the optional documentation which we've chosen to download. That's okay. So now we've got libj jpeg tagger. Let me just make a note of those other two packages on my list. section they're in, I can't find them on the list. Uh, 13. Okay. So, Libjpeg Turbo. Um, so the only extra switch I've got an explanation for is one to turn compatibility on with JPEG version 8. Um, so it looks like it's probably not required unless you know you have a specific need for that. So let's just configure and build it. Okay, so there's a note there saying about installing libjpeg turbo over an older jpeg installation which we haven't got so we can ignore that and just go straight to the build. Uh, sorry, straight to the install which is done. So that's complete. Um, LibWebP, I think that might be a requirement later on. Um, no, let's. This is optional. Uh, so, this is the kind of decision where you think to yourself, well, if I need it later on, is it worth building it now and have lift if build against it so it's, it can use its capabilities. So I think I'm going to be inclined to do that. Although it's adding the, to the time to build Xorg, it's it's probably worth doing this groundwork, especially if you're uh, building the system to use, um, you know, not, not just as a learning or a demonstration, but actually to use for real. So it's worth making this effort up front now because uh, you'll, you'll get the functionality later on down the line. So I recommended libjpeg turgo we've got, libpng we've got, libtiff we haven't got because it needs it itself. So again this is a sort of cyclic, a circular dependency. Optional gif lib, well that's for gifs isn't it? If flips that's worth installing. Uh, 
that's for API documentation so we can ignore that so let's get this one out of the way so it's just a simple make Right, so that's failed. Right, so although it says optional for the XMLTO, it actually does need it. So there may be, oh, there's no actual configure command, so it looks like we're going to have to download this XMLTO. If there was a configure command, we could do a configure minus minus help and hope that it would. Uh, tell us a switch to turn off the requirement to build documentation but there's a reason we can't do that so XMLTO we've got these requirements optional for DVI, PDF and PostScript backend processing um, so we can't, well I won't install these two because they're off off the BLFS but I'll, I'll go for this FOP it may uh, process these uh, these these may be for one particular uh, file type here the format so we'll just see what this does right I don't think I will actually because this now requires Apache AMP which requires job oh, actually I don't think that's too onerous come to think of it Java binary yeah I think this is just a this is the only binary that's installed but uh, we will come to build Java later on and you do need a, an existing Java installation to build Java kind of chicken and egg situation so we can do this uh, as it says there's a circular set of dependencies so to build the source JVM you need a binary so we'll install the binary for now and um, we'll have a go at installing the source at a later time so we're on a 64-bit machine so this is the link we need if obviously building 32-bit you'll use this first link and not the second link Okay, that's that fetched. I've just noticed we've got some runtime dependencies. Also, would be for sound, which for purposes of running Ant wouldn't be needed, but we'll install it now anyway. Cups to do with printing. Again, Ant would probably not require that, but we'll install it now. And Giflib, which is what we're trying to install, but again, it's to do with graphics. Ant would be running on a command line with no. GUI interface so we can ignore that dependency in it and these are runtime as well but let's install the ones that we haven't done yet so let's do cups first requires GNU TLS requires color D Dbus we haven't got yet libusb we haven't PAM we have XDG utils 
can't remember if we've got that one or not. So let's just search. Oh. No, we haven't got that, so we need that one. And we need cups, filters, post install. So you can see, we're, again, we're stacking up a load of dependencies. So let's go to the right. Okay, so cups, filters, needs, cups. So we'll ignore that one for the moment. XDG utils. Requires XMLTO. <laughs> so we're getting in quite a twist here. Let's see what we can install without any requirements for the moment. So let's do this libusb. So it doesn't support parallel builds, so they've put a minus J1 in the make command to ensure that it's only one or one, run one thread. install it okay so that was lib USB So dbus, that needs XORG libraries, and the rest are for tests and documentation. So we can just go ahead and grab this and install it. So if they do not already exist as a root user, create a system user and group to handle the system message bus activity. So we'll do both oh, as the root, of course. Do both of these commands. Okay, that's interesting. It says that the group message bus already exists. All oh, right, that would have been this command here, maybe because I'm part of the wheel group. It would have uh, completed that. So that's okay. So what commands have we got here? We've got quite a few. Let's copy this and see what they'll do. So disable doxygen. Yep, docs, disable XML. We haven't got XMLTO installed, although we are trying to install it. Disable static, disable system D, we don't use that. Uh, that's not actually there, is it? That's interesting. So it's not there, but we're not using system D. Um, I'll leave that in case there's any other functionality that this switch might disable. System D unit files. Yeah, I'm not, not sure what these are. Uh, these are in the configuration so we can leave them they'd be all needed enable tests don't need that enable embedded tests 
So we're not testing, so it doesn't matter. And this is to do with debugging. So I think we can go with that. And now we can build it. Okay, so now we can install. If you're using Desto install, well, if you need to know about that, that's at the beginning of the book. Um, I think it's, it's to do with the uh, in the section to do with package management. So, not doing that, we can ignore that. If you're still building a system in Droot, which we're not, if you want to run the unit tests, we're not doing that. So you can skip past this, configuring dbus. So if any package installed a dbus service file outside of the standard user shared dbus1 services directory, that directory should be added to the local session configuration. For instance, user local shared dbus1 services can be added by performing the following commands as a root user. So let's do this. To automatically start dbus daemon when system is rebooted, install the dbus boot script. So if we just do cd up one level into the blfs, do you remember we had the blfs boot scripts directory I said to leave there? This is the reason why there's going to be a few packages like this where they need a um, boot time uh, script to run to start the daemon. So we can just run that script, it installs these scripts here, creates some directories and installs the scripts and we should of course start the daemon as well uh, dbus start so slash atc init d dbus start and there it started successfully And it says here that this only starts the system-wide dbus. Each user requiring access to dbus services will need to run a session daemon as well. And it shows various ways of doing this. So that's completed. So we can... Remove that. So let's see what else we're doing. All right, let's start back here again. What did this need? Cups, which we're waiting to install. Glib. All oh, right, and. This was a requirement of cups, so let's ignore that for the moment. XDG utils, and this again was a requirement of XMLTOs, I remember. Oh, yes, we're trying to install FOP, aren't we? Requires Apache Ant, requires a Java binary, Java needed cups and ALSA and cups needed the cups filters post install that is so that's why we can't install cups at the moment because cups is needed but that's not needed by cups until it is installed so required new TLS that's required by cups So 
Uh, I think we can. I think we've got nettle. I think we can install this one. Yeah, we've got nettle. We've done make CA. Lib uni string we haven't done. I think lib tazen we've done. Yep. And p11 kit we've done. So let's get lib uni string up. Optional text live to rebuild the documentation so we can fire away with this one. So just configure and make. Okay, so we can install this now. That's that. Let's remove it. So that now enables us enables us to build GNU TLS. So we've got some explanations for the config here. So that's in the example there. So it says admit it if P11 kit is not installed. Well it is so we'll leave that in there. With default trust off file equals da da da. This which tells configure where to find the legacy CA certificate bundle and to use it instead of PKCS11. Use this if P11 kit is not installed so we can ignore that. API documentation we're not going to do. Use this switch if you wish to build the OpenSSL compatibility library. So that sounds like a good one to do. So let's copy this in. And copy that switch in. Without P11 kit, use this switch if you've not installed P11 kit. We have with included Unistring uses the bundled version Unistring, Unistring instead of the sister one. Use a switch if you're not installed Unistring. Well, we've just installed that, so we can ignore that switch. So we'll just use that configure command with the one switch added.
Okay, there's just a warning there. Um, there's no mention that in the manual, so I don't think there's anything to be con too concerned about. So it's just a confirmation of what's being built there, and we can start with the make. Okay, so we can now install that. We didn't create the API documentation, so that's that package installed. Okay, so let's just review where we are again installed GNU TLS, we've still got to install these ones here, we've done DBUS, LibUSB, PEM, XDG Utils, that needs to be done, so there's these two here, and that needs XMLTO, so ColorD needs DBUS, which we've now got, GLIB, little CMS 29 so we need that one whole kit I don't think we've done that have we no oh, so we need that one I think we've done SQL light yep Recommended object introspection. We've done that. Yep. LibGU dev. I don't think we've done that one. No. LibGUSB we haven't done. And Vala we haven't done. So let's take a look at these. Vala needs GLib. We've got recommended. Graph is for valid doc. Well, documentation. Let's see what this needs. Oh, quite a lot. So we've got Pango, Cairo, Xorg Libraries, Font Coffee, PNG. We've got these two. Optional telegraphic images that may be displayed inside the nodes of a graph. So we haven't got ghost script yet. Uh, so we're getting quite quite quickly diverted away from what we're trying to do here, just purely to add in functionality. Um, let's see how we go with these. We've got, we've got oh, with these right. So two of them are off BLFS, so that doesn't matter. QT512 for building the GV Edit Graph Editor. Another Graph Editor dotting needs only XORG libraries. Well, QT5 is quite a big install, it takes about an hour long, so I'll ignore that. So we won't be getting this Graph Editor. Uh, a load of language bindings, so we'll ignore that. Uh, Poplar. That needs CMake and font config. Cairo little CMS is one we're going to install. 
somewhere. Yeah, two dot nine. LibJPEG, Turgo, we've got LibPNG, we've got NSS, we've got, I'm not sure about OpenJPEG. No, we haven't got that one, so it's another one we need. So let's get a little CMS moved over here. Uh, OpenJPEG, so that should go there. Oh, uh, open JPEG needs little CMS as well, so let's move little CMS back down the line. And what else does open JPEG need? Lib PNG, Lib TIFF, we've got. I think we installed it, didn't we? What's it called? TIFF. Oh, perhaps we haven't installed it, so we're getting quite a lot deeper. There it is. Right, LibWebP, did I go for installing that? I think I did, yep. And that needs GIF lib. That needs right. I think I'm going to ignore this XML TO. It's only for HTML documentation here. Uh, and this will get rid of a lot of these dependencies we don't need. It's going to add so much time purely to allow us to build. Oh no, it was failing, wasn't it? I think that was what it was. This was failing because that's, so we do need it. That's right. It's a bit unfortunate. So, LibWebP is needed by... Right now, this is where I'm getting lost. It was further back here, wasn't it? Oh, it was needed by LibTIFF. LibTIFF. And it's optional. So I think I'm going to install TIFF and reinstall it once this LibWebP is uh, installed. So let's grab this it does become quite disheartening but don't let it get to you you just got to stick with the packages find the ones that haven't got dependencies or have got fewer dependencies and um, just try and deal with, deal with each one of them and eventually as you pick those off you'll find that you're you are installing more and more of the requirements for the packages higher up the dependency tree. So it is quite daunting now. We've got 20 or more packages to install uh, purely to allow this GIF loop to install. But it's, as I say, you do get on top of it eventually. So let's install this one. And luckily, these a lot of these packages are quite small quite simple to install, they don't take too long. It would be rather worrying if they were bigger packages that took hours to build and needed a needed load and load more dependencies. So we can install this one now. That's done. What I'm going to do is just go back to Oh, where was I? Yeah, just highlight this to remind me that's why I've left this tab here. So I'll remove the build so that when we come back to it, it's nice and clean. And then go back to little CMS, I think it was. Yep, that needed LibTIFF. Oh, let me. Make a little note to reload this one on my list. Liptif. Okay, so now we do a uh, little CMS.
So if you want to run a test, then the build procedure must be modified to make some library internal references visible to the test code. So we're not doing that. We can go straight for a configure and build. And now we can install Okay, so that's that one out of the way. So now we've got open JPEG, which needs to see my little CMS we've just done, PNG we've got, TIFF we've done. Although these are all optional, they're kind of just appearing because of other requirements. So it's probably not a bad thing. So let's grab this package and a patch oh sorry I haven't cleaned up so let's move these two files to the PLFS directory then go up and remove little CMS Okay, so we can just copy and paste these commands in to get the configuration and build done. And now install. So that's that one done. So let me mark that one off. Open JPEG. So now we're looking at Poplar. We've got CMake, Font Config, Cairo, CMS 2.9, Chubby Turbo, LibBNG, NSS, Open JPEG. So we can get this one done now. And this will download there. So we'll have that. So it's zero seventy four. And looks like we can just copy and paste this as it is. There's no other options for the configure. Okay, that's all done. So we can 
Uh, stole that now. Let's see. Install documentation. And now if you don't have the additional encoding package which you did, let's do these commands and install it. Okay, so that's done. And we can clean up, and that's that package done. So lib r svg. So that's got a couple of requirements. I don't think we've stored. Have we got any here? GDK picks buff is one of them. So what does that need? Glib, lib, lib jpg, turgo, lib png, and shared mime info. Right, well we need to shift this here anyway. So lib our SVG is a runtime dependency and that's what we're trying to build here. Uh, one of the requirements is this package, so it's almost a circular dependency but not quite so we do need to install this one first uh, shared mime info shared mime info that needs glib and libxml too so that's okay to build now because we've got both of those installed Info that's from GDK Pix buff and recommended we again let's say that's a runtime so it doesn't matter libtiff we've installed libraries we're installing still we've got that one so I think we've resolved this little bit we can get this one installed now Right, note, if your processor is not a very recent Intel, you may need to use make minus J1 for this package and explain why that is or why it's specifically Intel. So that's something to bear in mind if you get a failure. Uh, I don't think we will get a failure even though we're not... Oh, <laughs> say that, there is a failure there. No such file or directory. Okay, so let's remove this directory and start from fresh and we'll compile it with the J1 option to make in case that was the issue. Which it does seem to be. Yep. So it's obviously quite picky this uh, build. So let's install this now. That's okay. Now we can get GDK Pix buff installed. Oh, let me just uh, note that one down. So this is GDK Pix buff. I 
interested to share more info. Right, there it is. So just double check, we've got Glib, we've got JPEG Turbo, PNG and Shared Mime Info. If that's a runtime dependency, we've got Liptif and Axel Libraries are installed or being installed still. So that's good to go. So we've got an option here which is not part of the example to include a package called Jasper and it allows us to compile a JPEG 2000 image loader. So that sounds like that's an optional package worth installing so we'll take that. We'll go into that and see what that requires. That requires CMake we've got, JPEG Turbo we've got, FreeGlut we've got. I believe, did we get to install that? Yes, looks like we did. Let's um, come back out of this, remove that. Yeah, it looks like we did install that. I don't know what this GIF program does, it will say down here. It displays images, so that potentially could be useful. So let's do Jasper. And you can see how installing other packages, whether they're optional or recommended, they're cropping up in quite a few other packages. So although this is an optional package uh, and there's several requirements, we've actually got all the requirements already installed. Unless, of course, we need something like the documentation or uh, PDF documentation. We haven't got these two packages installed, but... You can, see there's lot, you can see there's lots of shared libraries and uh, installing an optional package on a whim is not necessarily a, a wasted, wasted um, event. So let's look at these commands. Make skip installed our path equal yes. Embedded library search paths. Okay, that sounds all right. Just enable dot no. Disables rebuilding documentation if text live is installed. Okay, so we haven't got it installed, but being it's in the example, I would leave it there um, because text live is optional, it's not a requirement. So I think we can take that as it is. Okay, and we can install this. Okay, so that's graphics and font libraries. Let me just mark that one off. Jasper. Okay, so we'll tidy that up. Remove that tab and we're back to GDK PixBuff, which we can now install again. We'll try to install again. And we were going to add in this extra switch to allow us to uh, have an extra uh, functionality. Yeah, I'm just checking this. This is for API documentation, so that's why we're not including that. So let's run that command and you can see 
it's been enabled there, enabled loader, so we are getting that functionality now. So we can run Ninja to build it. Sorry, I'm just um, looking for that one to tick off on the list. Right, so we can now install GDK PixBuff. Yeah, that's okay. Now, there's a note there uh, about installing the package if you use the desktop method, which you're not, so we can ignore that. So let's remove that now. Get rid of that tab. So the next one up the line is this libr svg, which is what GDK, let's go, go back into it, needed as a runtime dependency. It built okay with it, so we obviously didn't need it at the time we were compiling. So that's that one. Uh, we need lib croco by the looks of it. We haven't got that in the list, have we? No, so that's another dependency we need to install. Which needs glib we've got and libxml2 we've got, so we can install that now. Oops. So, got a nice simple config command. We, we're not using these two, or don't need to deal with this gtk.1. So, I'll just copy that in. Okay, so sudo and install that okay so Cairo we've done I believe yep Pango we've done let's just check that Pango yep and we need something called Rust C. Rust C, did we get this up here? No. Right, there's information there which basically says that um, it is well. How it, how it works and the fact that it downloads some files while it's uh, compiling. WLFS usually installs in user. When you later upgrade to a newer version of Rust, the old libraries in user lib Rust lib will remain with various hashes in their names, will not be usable and will waste space. The editors rec recommend placing the files in the op directory, in particular if you have reason to rebuild with a modified configuration. For example, using the shipped LLVM after building the shared LLVM, but perhaps also the reverse situation. It is possible for the install to leave a broken cargo program. In such a situation, I've removed the existing installation first and use a different prefix such as optrust C. Da, da, da. If you prefer, you can, of course, change the prefix to user and omit the LD config and the actions to add Rust C to the path. Current Rust build build system we use all available processes though it does not scale well and often fails uh, falls back to just use one core while waiting for a library to compile at the moment Rust does not provide any guarantees of a stable ABI Rust C defaults to building all 
support architectures using a ship copy of an OVM in VLFS. The build is only for the x86 architecture. Rossi still claims to require Python 2, but it's only really necessary when building some other architectures with a ship LVM. If you intend to develop Rust crates, this build may not be good enough for your purposes. Unlike previous versions, the build times of this version when repeated on the same machine seem reasonably consistent. And usually a Dester style method is being used to install this package. This is because the running installers because running the installer's root not only downloads all of the cargo files again to root cargo, it then spends a very long time recompiling using this method, saves a lot of time at no extra cost at no cost of extra disk space. So there's a lot of things to take in there. I think the main issue is where do we put this? Do we put it in the ops or do we put it in the user? So if we put it in the user it makes it more difficult to upgrade so the editors recommend placing the files in the opt directory well unless you are building this system to use seriously for serious use uh, on a real machine it probably wouldn't matter if we installed it in user so let's just take a quick look to see what the instructions do so they are actually installing it in the opt directory so we'll just go along with that. So we've got some dependencies again. Uh, let's have a look. Curl, we've got CMake, and I think we had libssh2 as well. Yeah, so that one's there. So we can just go ahead and get the package. Oh. This is quite a big package, this one. But at least it's coming down fast. Okay, so we can extract that. Okay, and um, we can change into that directory. Okay, so make a file for it, to, um, a directory for it to live in, as the root user, of course. Oh. Okay, so if we look in opt, we can see what they've done is they've created a version directory which is where it'll get installed, but we've got a sim link just called Rust C. So they're basically saying you can create or install a different version of Rust C and just point the sim link at that different version uh, just to make it an easy way to upgrade. So we can come out of the root user. It's saying we're creating a config file here, config.toml. So there's some options here. I don't know if it's worth changing any of these. Probably not. You can see there's the destination directory we just created. And optionally the user if you decide to go down that route. So let's just copy and paste that into the source directory. And then we run rust or install buildings rust with these two commands as you can see it started by downloading some files already
Okay, so that's finished. Took rather a long time. Looks like an hour and a half that took. 1 hour 35 minutes 57 seconds. So the next bit is to do with testing, which we're not doing. Then it says, still as your normal user, do a tester install. So let's copy those commands and paste those in.
Right, so that's the Dester install, which I think effectively has installed it into the uh, source directory. So the next two commands as the user will actually put it in its final destination. So if we installed Rusty Adopt, you need to update the following configuration files so that Rusty is correctly found by other packages and system processes. So we did that. If we just take a look, that's the only package in there at the moment. We can actually check that the symlink is working correctly. There's the files inside. So you'll note in this addition to the ld.so.conf configuration file it's pointing to the sim link and not the version directory and that as I said before is to allow you to update Rust-C with a new version directory but the sim link Rust-C is pointing to the version that you choose to have as the active version So that's just uh, added, uh, basically that adds the path for Rust-C to the beginning of the path environment variable and this last command will make that active so if I did, let's go back to the normal user, if we do echo path, you see that's the current path by sourcing profile drust-c that script is now prepended i.e. It's, it's put that rust-c path before all other paths so that's rust-c installed let's remove that ok so the install hasn't tied it up completely so I just need to do the rest of it as root to remove that okay so now we go back to libr svg um, we've done all the required gtk3 and Valor need to be installed really because they're required later on so I'm going to do them both now not sure if we already had Valor up yet yeah, we have so let's get rid of that one. GTK3. We've already got GTK2 installed. Oh, sorry, we will be installing GTK2. Um, let's move Valor along uh, to the near the end. So this needs glib2 and graph is required for Validoc, which we're not too bothered about at the moment. It's recommended, but um, can we actually install it? Oh yes, this is quite a complicated one. Is this? Yeah, this looks like it relies on stuff for actually installing. Yeah, the R S V G. I say these are optional, but I think um, you'll find that uh, functionality of certain programs will be severely limited without these um, optional uh, packages. So it's I'd say quite recommended to um, install them at this stage while, while we have packages that optionally require them it's certainly worth doing the hardest part as you've seen is working out the 
how to resolve the dependencies in the most efficient manner. So let's just go back here. Graph is recommended. Um, I'm tempted just to install Valor at the moment until Graph is installed and then come back and reinstall Valor. So let's, yeah, we've got a patch here to allow building without Graph is, so we will go ahead and do that. So let's fetch it and the patch so let's what does it say here if the recommended dependency graph is, is not installed, apply patches to prevent building the Valor doc program of libraries that can be used to generate API documentation in HTML format via Valor from Valor source code. So we shall do that this on this occasion. So I'll come back and reinstall Valor, but leave that graph is uh, in because uh, although it's not necessary, completely necessary for this package, uh, graph is. is usable for other packages and we may as well gain that functionality when it is installed even if uh, it's not maybe particularly required so let's configure and build it So I'll just make a note that needs to be reinstalled. Okay, so we can install that now. And that's complete. So let's go back and remove the source directory. And I'm going to do what I did before and just highlight that, but leave the tab open to remind me why I've left that there. Okay, so we've got GTK3 to install. So we've got ATSPI2, I don't think we've installed that and it's not in our list to install, so we'll have that. Everybody, I think we've installed that. Yep. GTK picks buff, I'm sure we did that a little bit earlier on. Yep, Libby Poxy we haven't, Pango we have, recommended, we've got this add waiter icon theme, high colour icon theme, yeah we've done that one, oh that's needed for tests anyway, um, alright the Add waiter icon theme is also needed for test, but it says it's the default as well for setting keys, so we do need that one. ISO codes, libxkb common, not sure if I've had that one. Doesn't look like we have, so we need to pull that one in. Wayland and Wayland protocols, I'm pretty sure we've done those. Yeah. 
and that's recommended if building known, which we're not. Rest are optional. So let's go to the end one. We need X keyboard config for this. Recommended lib, lib XCB, which I think we've got. Yep, and Wayland, we've already checked we've got that. So we can install this one. Oh, sorry, uh, we need to go to keyboard config first. That requires XORG libraries, so we're okay there. So let's download that one. Okay, so we've just got an explanation for the one option that's in there in the configure, so we'll just configure and build. And we can install it. Now I can install lib xkb common. Extracted it first. Okay, so we've got two switches here. One is saying disable static, which I've not included disable static version, so we won't add that unless we have a reason to do that, and I haven't, so won't bother adding that. And disable X11, use a switch if you've not installed libxcb. So we have installed lib libxcb, so we don't need to add that. So we can, we can just copy the config and make as they are. And now we can install. So that's that. Now we've got ISO codes. That hasn't any dependencies, so we can go straight ahead and download it. Extract. And build it. So there's a note there about installing over previous code, uh, previous inver uh, versions, so we haven't got that, so we can ignore that note. Okay, so we can just install that one. Right, so let's make a note of those ones. find the um, keyboard ones I'll look for them in a moment. So we can get rid of that one. Um, D 
doing this for GTK, aren't we? Okay, so right, this icon theme it's got some optional dependencies. GTK two we've got installed. Git, I'm not gonna install that. It's um not necessary unless you're a developer. Uh GTK three we're trying to install now, it says if present lib R SVG is also required. Well that's one of the targets we're trying to install at the moment which is just there so um, Inkscape is a package I probably will install but as I say at the moment it's uh, it's not available so we'll just install this theme as it is simple configure and make right that, that was quick that certainly wasn't the uh, point nine SBU it states up there so whether that's due to these optional packages that increase the build time uh, so we do sudo minus e make install now okay this looks like this might be the bit that takes the time Okay, that's complete, so we'll remove that. Let's tick that one off. got a program called libepoxy requires Mesa we have that so we can just download and install this okay so there's nothing special about this we can just copy and paste Commands here. Okay, and now we can install it. It's all done. OK, 
Okay, so now we have this AT dash SPI2ATK2, and this needs AT SPI2 core and ATK2. ATK2, I'm not sure if we, yeah, we've already had this up here. So let's get rid of that one. Go back to this one here. This is Glib, which we've got. We've got Cobject Introspection, so we can install this as it is. Again, it's a fairly straightforward configuration and build. That's okay. Now we can install it. And tidy up. So that was 80k. Remove that from the list on the tabs and we go to AT SPI2 core. This needs DBus, GLib and XORG libraries which we've got. We've got an optional one there. So we can just download that one. Uh, do it again. Set time. And it's a fairly straightforward install. Okay, that's done. So it SPI two core. Remove that tab and now ATSPI2 ATK. Again, same instructions for building and installing. So as a note there, just about if you've installed it using the Dester method, which we haven't, so we'll ignore that. Okay, that's that one done. So uh, it looks like we're in a position to build this. Now that's one of the ones we're installing. Can we do that one yet? Let's have a look. Cups is before it as well. So it needs Fallow, which we've got. These two here we haven't got, so let's have a quick look at them. Uh, LibGU Dev and LibGU SP. GU Dev. Right, that can be installed. Yeah, we can do that one now. So that's a nice straightforward Ok, 
Okay, that's the one done. So libg USB, this was the other one, wasn't it, for color D? Yeah, libg USB. USB. And this has got a requirement for libusb and USB utils. Valo, we've got an object introspection. We haven't got GTK doc. So that's for installing documentation. So it's recommended. Let's have a look to see what that requires. Right, we've got docbook, XML, and XSL. We haven't got its tool. We've got lib XSLT. We haven't got highlight. So let's have a look at these two. Let's highlight. All right, okay, needs boost and lure. Right. Um, let's grab those. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to bite the bullet and install Qt. Um, it's cropping up quite a lot now. Um, even though it's optional, as I say, we will we will have to install it at some point. Uh, so let's have a look at that one. Requires Xorg libraries. Right, because it's such a big package on its own, I'm going to separate this tab and work from this one for a while. So let's check what we've got of these. Also, we haven't got that. Actually, I'm not sure if it was on the other window. No, I thought it was. I can't see it there. Oh, that's a lib that is there. Yeah, so let's remove it from this one. And stick it up here. Make CA we've got cups. Alright, oh, okay, we're due to install cups. Right, this, this is where we've got some hard decisions to make because um, CUPS potentially is quite important um, if you need printing. We we'll probably don't need it in this instance for this demo, so I'm going to ignore that as a recommendation for QT um, at my peril. So let's move on to Glib. We've got GSD plugins base, we'll need that. Half buzz, we've got ICU 6.3, I'm sure we have that. Yeah. Jasper, we've got. You see, that was an optional one before, but I knew we would need it. Uh, it's a recommendation. So, libjpg turbo, we've got. libmng, we haven't. libpng, we have. Liptif, let's check the versions of these. Um, lib PNG and TIFF. Some of these packages there are two different versions, so it's something to be careful of. It's okay, pretty common. Mesa empty dev we haven't got. PCRE 2, I think we only did PCRE, not the version 2. Yeah, so we need to install that one. SQ Light. We've got that. Wayland we've got. And Mesa must be built with the Wayland EGL backend, which we have got. So let's check this next one. Which is XCB Util Image. I'm pretty sure that was part of the Yeah, it is part of the Xorg. There it is. Installation. Key sims we've got and util render util we've got and util wm we've got. 
um, and then we've got some optional stuff there which we'll ignore so let's see about these ones so PCRE that's okay we can install this Right, we've got a nice big config here so let's just run through this looks similar to the PCRE one actually so Unicode so we, yeah it's there we need that PCRE 2.16 yeah, they look good we'll need these static enable JIT that's added this time so we can just copy that as it is Okay, so that's ready to install. And that's done. Okay, let's get rid of that and we've got this MT dev with no dependencies so it's nice and simple. Let's install that. LibMNG requires Lib Turbo, LibJPEG Turbo 2. We've got that, I think. Yep and a little CMS 2.9 which we've got so let's download that and we'll compile it Okay, now we can install. And that's done. So, GST plugins base. So this has a few dependencies, we've got GStreamer, AlsaLib which is here so we can move that across, CD Paranoia, plugin, Cultured Introspection, we've got ISO codes we've installed I believe, yeah. 
Nibog, Siora, Forbis, and the XOR libraries. So let's move these all across. Sorry. Okay, so we'll go to the back end here. This needs libog, which is already here, so let's move that around. Libog will compile on its own. So let's get that one. Just copy and paste the compile commands. And install. So lib for this optional looks like it's all to do with documentation so we can ignore that Let's grab hold of it so there's a switch there for enabling docs that probably requires this packages here that are optional so we won't add that we'll just copy the commands as they are and install So libsiora requires libog we've got, libforbis we've got, and there's some options there. Um, I would normally install this but um, it's probably not really necessary. Let's see what it requires. Uh, it does require quite a lot, I think I will leave it. This is um, getting quite bogged down at the moment. So let's just go for this Libsiora. So we can run this in as it appears in the book. So we can install that. And the next commands are for building examples, but it requires these two packages here, so I um, won't run that one in. Just clean up now. So it's CD Paranoia, that doesn't have any dependencies, so we can just grab this one with its patch. support parallel build so they've added the minus j1 to the make command for us and now just install it
So Alcelib's just got a couple of optional packages, one of which we've got anyway. Alright, okay, uh, there's some kernel stuff that needs to be done here, so let's um, become the root user. Well, let's not do it like that. Okay, and We'll go to sources Linux. If you remember in Linux from scratch, we made the uh, Linux source directory only readable and writable. So only writable by the uh, root user. As you can see, the root user and group the only ones that can write to this directory so we need to be root to go into this uh, so what we need to do is to go into make menu config and we need to check these um, options are set in the kernel so it's hierarchical so we need to look for the first menu option device drivers which is down here so just use the down arrow to move the cursor down to that line and press enter then we need to look for a line that says sound card support so you can press page down here because it's a couple of pages down um, maybe another one Oh, I've gone too far down, let's go to the top again. One down. Yeah, there it is. It's actually one and a half pages down. Obviously, the number of pages varies on the number of lines you've got in your terminal. So that says you can either set it to built in or as a module. It's already set as built in, so we'll leave it like that. Press enter to go into it. And it says advanced Linux sound architecture should be set to. Uh, built in or a module it's built in so that's fine it just says select settings and drivers appropriate for your hardware so we need to go into this and we can leave all the defaults the bit we do need to set is in here under PCI sound devices now if you remember I set originally I set to use HD audio and the reason why I went away from that is because you need to select one of these drivers and I'm not sure which one the virtual box would use so rather than try to work that out I've gone for an easier option of just going for the Intel 9, AC97 option which is what we changed the um, uh, virtual machine to so which is that option there so we'll just uh, set that as a module I think so you just press M on that line and it will go to the, the M will appear in, in that little uh, option box there so now do exit exit again exit again exit again and exit for final time do you wish to save your new configuration yes so now we need to build those changes so we just do make and we can do minus j 4 for the number of cores uh, actually the make option should uh, make um, job should uh, I can't remember what the variable is called the reason I get confused is because there's one for gen 2 which I normally use and uh, it's a slightly different name let's see what it is called uh, I'll try and echo it first Oh right, okay, it's not there because we've gone into root, so it would it is advisable to to use minus J4. It doesn't actually actually exist, so we'll just run that in.
okay so you can see this is number two it says there this is because we've already built it once since the uh, kernel was first configured we've reconfigured it and we've rebuilt it so this is the second time we've built it and that's why that number goes up every time you build it it will go up by one so next thing we need to do is to install the modules so type in make modules underscore install and then we need to copy the new kernel image so for a 64 bit it's under arch x86 underscore 64 press tab twice there to get the actual image we copy that to boot actually before we do this it might be worth backing up the current kernel in case we have problems we've made a change that's not compatible it won't boot or something breaks so if we do push d forward slash boot so we're now in the boot directory so there's the three original files that we created that's the original kernel that we created in Linux from scratch that's the symbols map file and that's the config file so we'll create copies of all of these and let's start with the kernel and rename it something like original um, system.map rename it to system.map.original and the config to config okay so now if at any time because the um, grub configuration if I display it um, CFG isn't it yeah you see it's going to load that kernel there which is that file there and that's the one we're going to overwrite with our new kernel that we've just built but if, if that does fail, when we reboot, we can edit the boot line and add in dot .original and we can boot back to our known working kernel. And that will enable us to recover and rebuild or investigate why the, the actual kernel we did build did, didn't boot or didn't have the effect we wanted. So now that's done, if we do pop D to return to where we were, and we can now copy the new kernel into the boot just type vm and it will copy the name of the existing one but if you press tab a couple more times you can see that's the one we're going to overwrite which is what the config is the grub config is pointing at so by default when we reboot it will pick up the new kernel and that's our get out of jail free card So we do the same with system. Again, if I tab that twice, you can see the current one we're going to overwrite and our backup. And finally, remember the config file is hidden in the uh, kernel directory. So we need to type that out and that gets copied into the boot again. Press it twice. That's the original one we're going to write, overwrite and that's the a copy of the original which is our backup so that's done so if we uh, exit that control D or type in exit return to where we were it's not necessary to reboot now but um, ideally you should do because you may forget you've done these changes and wonder why something's not working all of a sudden but I don't think in this situation it's particularly important to reboot now uh, leave the reboot to when it's uh, more necessary to, to reboot which is, it is possible it will be in the future because there are other changes we'll need to probably make to the kernel or at least check the kernel so here we are let's now configure and make ALSA there's no optional configurations here 
So I'll just accept the defaults. Okay, so we can now install the library. Not, not doing documentation, and it's just a bit about configuration. And it says the default is adequate for most installations. So that's that one. So the next one's GStreamer. We've got the required, we've got the recommended. So we can fire away with this one. So I just copy and paste the configure and build instructions. And there's a cautioner about if we're installing GStreamer or reinstalling it uh, with a previous version existing, which we're not, so we can ignore that. Okay, so now we can install GStreamer. So, uh, GST plugins base. We should have all these requirements now. We've got GStreamer, Auslib, Paranoia, CD Paranoia, Object Introspection, I said Coslib, Oglib, Tiora, LibForbis, and that's all the libraries. So let's get that one now. So, um, it says if you need a plugin for a given dependency, that dependency needs to be installed before this application. So, I'm not quite sure what plugins are, but it's worth bearing in mind if some sort of soundy thing doesn't work that you may need to reinstall GStreamer base. And I would expect um, that there would be some note telling that if it needed to be done in the BLFS manual. So we can just copy this in here. You notice they've got some uh, configuration here where they've got some freeform text. So that may be something that you want to alter. In fact, this is not the correct URL for what we're doing here because this is the development URL with the SVN bit there. 
we're actually on the stable branch so you can just about to see on the URL there so that's not quite right but it doesn't really matter if it matters for you, to you and uh, you are doing a, a build that you want to keep then you may want to change those Okay, so that's built and we can install it. So, yeah, we did do these, didn't we? This should all be, all these uh, dependencies should all be uh, in place now. Um, yeah, is this concerning me that this cup's not installed yet? I'm just wondering if we can um, get cups installed as it is and rebuild it. Um, let's just go through this again and see why we needed to get where we are at the moment. is libg usbs i think lib usb so we've installed lib usb haven't we yeah let's just double check that so i'm going to do an update db And then I can do locate LS USB. It hasn't found it, so have we not? Let's try running it. No, we haven't installed this. So that's another example where I've downloaded it, 
but it's not yet installed with USB. Sorry, um, that was USB utils, wasn't it? Not lib USB. Uh, that's the file I should be looking for. Yeah, so that is there. That's okay. That tallies. So it actually looks like I can go back and install this. Yeah. Let's let's do this one next. So it's the package and a patch file. So we can there's no config option, so just copy the patch, configure and the make command. Now we can install it. And then as the root user fetch this USB IDs file It says the script LSUSB PY displays information in a more easily readable form than LSUSB. To find options, use LSUSB PY minus H. So we could run that just to see what it does. So LSUSB on its own looks like that. Oh, we haven't got any USBs. I just remembered it's turned off, so it's pretty pointless running either of these in. Yeah, there's no no results. Um, so it says the USB IDs data file is constantly being updated to get a current version periodically. So again, that's something that you may want to add in to cron. Um, and indeed, here is a cron script for it. So let's create that in case we do decide to install a cron script. Sorry, a cron uh, package. Um, so that's that one done. So the next thing, this was all for color D, wasn't it? With GUSB. So have I mistakenly left this one up or is it a duplicate? Uh, USB. Yeah, this is the one with the. Yeah, so this can be deleted. This shouldn't be here. So libg USB is the one we want to install next. We've got USB utils. We've got object. Oh yeah, I think this was the path we're going down. GTK doc is what we're trying to install. And this needed highlight, which needed QT, so that's why we're ending up where we are. So, um, yeah, it says optional, doesn't it? I wonder if we install highlight without that once QT is installed. Um, then we come back and build highlight. The reason I'm a bit reluctant to um, install QT is purely because of that cups dependency. Uh, where's it gone? Yeah, see, it's got cups as a recommended uh, package and it's not installed at the moment. Um, if it was optional, I'd probably ignore it. But the mm. fact that it's there um, 
is what's concerning me. So what I should do is just drag this tab into here and we'll go back to this highlight and install this and like I say we'll come back and install it when Qt is installed Oh, right, okay, we haven't done boost or lure, have we? Just realised. So, they need to be done. So, boost. That's ready to go. And lure. That's ready to go as well. So, let's install lure first. And a patch. And there's a test suite there as well, which I won't download because we're not doing tests. So some packages check for the PK, but the package config file for Lua, which is created with this. So we'll just copy that in. Install Lua by running the following commands. So that's the patch, a set change, and the install. There's no extra options there, so we can just copy and paste that in. Okay, so become the root. And we can install it. That's done. So now we can go on to boost. We have ICU, we have Python 2 installed and OpenMPI is an external package to the BLFS book, so we'll ignore that. So let's fetch boost. It's another fairly big package, 91 megabytes. Extract that. into the directory and we've got two commands here let's just check the options we've got threading equal multi ensures boost is built with multi-threading support so we've got that link equal shared ensure shared libraries are created and then right it looks like we need to add a minus j4 in my case to build in parallel and we can add this with python equals python 3 to use python 3 instead of python 2 but it's known to cause installation to fail on some systems so I'm not going to risk that um, so we'll just add the minus j n to this b2 command so uh, sorry not minus j2 minus uh, J4 
Okay, so that's built. Um, we can now install it. So if you remember it said down here to use the minus JN to the, with the uh, B2 line, so we'll, we'll use that here. and just a link to finish up and that's done so now we're okay to go with highlight So just a simple make. Okay, and it says a separate make command there for the GUI front end. We're not doing Qt at the moment, so that's something we'll do the second time round. So let's just do the install. And that's it. So I'm going to highlight that and just leave this tab floating around. Let's stick it towards the end. So let's see what else have we got to do. Where are we coming from with that? Was it GTK doc? Yes, it was. So I'm not sure if we've installed that one yet. That's the only dependency that's remaining. Uh, let's tidy this up. Right, I may have to have a break soon. I'm quite aware that it's coming up to the 12 hour limit I've got for the videos on Google um, it depends on whether um, we can come to a natural break or not I, ideally I'd like to finish all this XORG stuff and uh, that will be a natural break um, so I may carry on to the end of that and then when I post the video I'll, I'll maybe split the video uh, a point earlier earlier on from now uh, maybe even split the video so it's in two segments that are quite even um, so I'll just see how I go but I, I've got to keep in the back of my mind how, how long this recording has been going for so let's have a look at ITS tool so yeah we can install this and hopefully also we we start to uh, begin to resolve some of these dependencies and um, with any luck there won't be too many extra ones that we haven't already identified so we can just go straight in with this nice and quick so I'll just install this now and that's done Right, so 
this is graph is gtk dot that's the one we're after so we've got these two we've just done that one we've already done that one we've just done that one so i think we can get this one out of the way now simple one okay and now we can install it Okay, so oops, let's mark this one off. Right, so um, I think we can remove that now. So it probably means that if we've got the option to build documentation, that we've actually got the tool to do that now. Although I think most of the documentation has been built with that was API documentation, which uh, unless we're developers. Um, we wouldn't be, really be interested in. So now we can build this libgusb. We've got all the uh, requirements, all the dependencies in place. So let's get that one. Okay, so, right, well, here's an example. Um, we can add this switch to build documentation. Uh, it, it's not mentioning it's API documentation, so I don't see one why we can't add that in. It will make the build a little bit longer, but if we've got, oops, that's wrong. Um, I didn't put the suffix in two dots to tell it the where to find the um, build directory so let's paste it in again uh, yeah I could do it like that oh no I can't because it's on multiple lines so I have to be like that that way around first it was true and then this dot dot to tell it where the source files are okay that's from the previous command so let's recall that That'd be easier there we go and now we can run ninja to build it and install Yeah, all these warnings are documentation warnings. So that's that one done. And again, it seems to be with these ninja ones, they don't really clear up properly. I mean, yeah, it shouldn't really happen like that, in my opinion. So we'll get rid of that. And let's see where we're going. So that was libgusb. Uh, I'll just check out the list. Let's 
find what that was for. This is four now. Um, so I know we were needing to install. I think that one wasn't it. So that needs fop, which needs an ant, which needed Java, which needed cups. Right? Here. Yeah, it's all because of cups, isn't it? Cups needed color D. Right, okay. So, um, Colour D needed pole kit. Right, I don't think that was one of the ones that's causing us to stop. But I think we can resolve this one. We need this JS52, which is not on here. So, let's go for that one. Right, this needs auto conf two ICU sixty three dot one we've got an SPR I think we've already got that one. Yep. Python exorg and zip we've got as well, I think is one of the first ones, yeah. So it's just auto conf, isn't it? Yeah. Optional deja new require for test, so we don't don't worry about that one. Um, so as it says here, this is an old version of AutoConf, um, so we need this. I assume because this package is expecting that version. So let's get that one and its patch. And if we've got anything, no, there's no other options here to install on the configure command, so we'll just paste that straight in. Right, so that's ready to install. Oh, actually, we should be going to sudo su. There's several lines there, that's okay. Okay, let's tick that one off. Get rid of that. So now we've got this JS52. Yep, we're okay with the dependencies. A copy link. So this name is different to the other ones, different file name to the actual name itself. So what options have we got? It says all the with parameters are to use the system installed libraries for stability. Enable read line to install use the read line support and enable thread safe to support multiple threads at one time so we can just copy all that in
Right, so that's built and we can now install it. So now we're able to install Polkit. So let's get the package and a patch file. So we need to add a dedicated user and group to take control of the Polkit daemon. So let's become root to do this. And now patch the source code. And all right, okay, let's uh, just inspect the configure. So we've got enable lit system D login no fixes building without system D which is not part of LFS and BLFS so that's okay with all FW shadow this parameter configures the package to use the shadow rather than the Linux PAM authentication framework change the argument to PAM if you'd like to use Linux PAM if you did not install Build Polka with Linux PAM support, you can skip the section. I would suggest that we change it to PAM beings. We've got that facility. So we will copy that bit uh, changes to PAM it says table stat uh, static and enable GTK doc if you want to install the API documentation, well, I don't want that API, so I won't bother with that one. So let's configure that. And now we can run make. And just checking there the output of the configuration. You can see the PAM has been enabled there. PAM support, yes. So let's run this now. Okay, so we can now install that. And let's become the root to do some configuration for PAM. And that's it, that's complete. So, looks like Color D was the one that needed Polkit. We've got Dbus, Glib, little CMS, Polkit now, SQLite, Gobject Introspection, GUDev, GUSB, and Vela. I think we're just waiting to reinstall Vela for some reason. Oh, for Graphis, that's all right. So, let's do Color D now.
So again, it's a user and a group that we need to add. So we need to become the root user to add the group and add the news user. It says clean up about 100 warnings. So let's get rid of them. Install color D with these options. So let's just check these configurations. Dim user color D, VAPI true. So that enables the valid bindings. System D false because we don't use that. Lib color D compact true. That's for all the packages that use color D. Our guard CMS sensor equals false. Right, we haven't got that installed because it's off, off the BLS book. Bash completion is false. Okay, we haven't got that. Service building of documentation. Well, we can build that. Uh, .q tools, I'm not sure if we had that or not. Let's have a look. No, we haven't got that installed yet, so we'll leave the man pages. Although I would say on a on a real build, if it's a system you're going to use, that that's probably a good idea to use that if you're going to be using this package. So let's just copy all of that and put a true in there for the docs. And then add in the dman equals false. Okay, that looks like it was successful. So let's run Ninja to build it. Okay, so now we can install the package. And then that's done. Okay, so let's do the rest of it with sudo. We'll remove that. So next up is cups. We've got GNU TLS, we've just done color D. Pretty sure we did GNU TLS. Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, it's not there. Um Dbus we've got libusb, pam, xdg utils I think we did. Maybe we didn't. xdg utils. Looks like we haven't done that. Confirms it. So let's go and do that one next. So this needs XML TO. Right, we've got links installed. It says any one of these, so that's okay. So this this XML TO, which was I think one of the ones that was causing us to rebuild a lot of stuff. There it is there. Oh yes, this is the circular bit now. FOP it needs, which needs Apache, which needs Java, which needs CUPS, and CUPS needs XDG, and that's recommended. So, let's have a look at XDG. Oh, 
Right, so X, X Motio is required for XDG. So let's backtrack to cups. XDGs are only recommended there. So it looks like we should be able to build this without XDG, but we'll have to come back and rebuild cups to take advantage of XDG when, when it's installed. So let's have a go at this. Right, it says about kernel configuration for USB printers and parallel port printers. So um, this is down to you whether you have this type of printer or not. I mean, obviously, if you're just following this for educational purposes, then it doesn't matter. Um, but if you have a USB printer or even an old style parallel port printer then the kernel will need to be configured in the same way as we did before. I won't do that because it's not going to make any difference to what, what we're doing here at the moment. So now we need to add a user and groups so let's become the super user uh, yeah SU so let's add the LP user and a group and we can add users to the LP admin group so I'm going to add BLFS so that as a normal user it can access the admin right okay it says here if you didn't install XDG utils use the following set to change the default browser that we use to access the CUPS web interface so for the moment we'll do this in case we need to, um, even though we haven't got Firefox installed, at least it will make things work as we expect because we haven't got that installed yet. When we come around to do it again, then we can just ignore this said. As it says, replace Firefox with web browser of your choice. As I say, we haven't got that, so we could put anything in there really. Um, actually, I should have done that as the normal user I think I wouldn't have thought it would have made a problem let's just check yeah it still is the uh, BLFS user so that's okay so let's check these configure commands now what we've we got we've got the uh, disable system D and a three with so Several so system D, we know why we're doing that. With RC DER, yeah, we need this for the boot script. Uh, yeah, boot script with system groups admin. This switch ensures only LP admin will be used as the CUPS admin groups, so that's a good idea. Did slable libusb if you have installed libusb but wish to use the kernel USB LP driver. I would suggest that the kernel driver would be the preferred one. But I guess that will be a personal preference and it may even be dictated to by the uh, maybe the USB interface or, or printer even that you've got. So um, yeah, I, yeah may, maybe we won't even bother with it because it's not there. But I think if I was building a system for use, I would, I would, like I say, tend to use the kernel driver. Enable libpaper if you've installed libpaper and wish to use it with cups. I think this is an optional package. Let's have a look at that if it's a simple one. Yes, it is. Let's install this before we go on with cups. So 
what I'll do is leave cups as it is and I'm going to push the directory to the one above fetch this package extract it with paper and install it let's just check if there's anything about these no it's just disable static so we'll just copy this as it is okay so now we need to become the root user and running all these commands here I didn't do that right, did I? No. Because of that, I didn't read the screen. Right, now we can paste this in. That's better. So configuring lib paper, ETC paper size, sets the default system paper size. So here in the UK we use A4 size paper. In America, I believe is it letter it's called. So you'd want to change that to whatever your paper sizes that you use by default so that's that done oh that's underscore that's why I was stopping off to lip paper when I was doing the tab Okay, so now if I do pop D to return back to the directory we're in, which was the cups one, we can go back to the config command, which is all of this we haven't done yet. Paste that in, and we can now add in enable lib paper. and build it with make Okay, so we'll become the root and install it. And then it says create a basic cups client configuration file by installing. Uh, running the following command as the root user, so we'll just copy and paste that in. And then, because we've got GTK2 installed, we need to run this command to update the. Oh, I thought we had GTK2 installed. Have we not done it yet? GTK2. Right, okay. And GTK3. Right, I didn't realise we had both of them pending. I thought we'd already done two. So, okay, we can't run that now. That's not a problem. So, there's some configuration for Linux PAM. So, let's put that in. And then we need to go up to the BLFS boot scripts directory and install a start script, a boot script for it. And because of that, we need to start it. Uh, cups. So that's running now. So that's that one done. Oh, did I want to keep that? Did I want to keep that? Let's just double check. Is there something here to redo? 
oh yes xdg util so I'll leave that up and um, uh, I'll come and reinstall this when xdg utils is, is up and running 